Well, crowd, I think it's time to go live. Welcome to our fortnightly live stream, and thank you for joining us on a night that looks like it's jam flack full of Premiership football that you've decided to either double watch, you've got one eye on the football and one eye on us, or you've joined us live, or you've joined us on catch up because you were watching the football. But thank you for joining us anyhow, and we must thank the following people for making this fortnight live stream possible. So we'd like to thank the great people at the Seco, the people who sponsor the race wall at Luden Palazzoli. We'd like to thank Marshall Tuflex, and we'd also like to thank Wago, and I can never remember the last one, Gordon. It will be Doncaster Cables. It will be Doncaster Cables, and we do believe that Aaron is on this evening, because we just saw Aaron flash up, so if you're in the comments, Aaron, please leave a message to say that you're in there. We've got some special guests, Gordon. Would you like to introduce our special guests? We have. I'll start with, uh, yeah, well, my uh, current former colleagues who I've worked with for a long time, it's uh, Mr. Ray Maloney. If anyone's uh, been in the lighting world, never came along to uh, Lux Live. But uh, yeah, we used to run that trade show in London Indeed, for uh, 10 show. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, obviously the lighting show. world is so exciting. I left and Ray stayed in it. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about tonight, lighting. Yes, and that brings us, doesn't it, to those, you've got some very good photographs of some, some terrible lighting installations and everyone loves a terrible lighting picture, but you're actually going to say what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And anyone who hasn't seen it, Ray Maloney's done the 30 rules of lighting that we've done, haven't we, as uh, little individual videos. Have you left the link for those in the description? I one? will put a link in the description. He'd forgotten to do it, even though we asked him earlier. That's yeah. one of those links that will appear later on. So if you're not watching it live, those links will be in there and they're very much worth going in and having a look at them. We've also got what we like affectionately to call Big T, but actually it's Trevor from EV Blocks. Tell us a little bit about EV Blocks, Trev. Yeah, so we make uh, precast concrete foundations to make electricians' lives a lot easier. Precast concrete base for pedestal EV chargers to go straight onto. So no mucking about mixing concrete on site. Okay, it's very on trend. We're always going to be on the main camera down there, don't worry about it. We've been looking up there at camera <laughs> one, and yeah, so we're, we're everywhere and everywhere on there. So, so very on trend at the moment. We're going to get some questions on, and we're going to look at some photographs about these EV blocks and how they can make your life easier. And we've done some videos that on the channel as well. And again, they'll be worth checking out after you've done this live stream as well. We're going to get to the register, but first of all, we're going to do Gary's Swap Shop. So that means I need a key word for Gary's Swap Shop. So if you look into that camera there, Ray, and you say Gary's Swap Shop keyword is... And Gary's swap shop keyword is today, lighting. 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 Yes. So yes. just that one word. We've had, we had a debate about this. We, uh, is it, what are we going to go? It's going lighting. In? It's, it's nothing else. It's lighting. It's yeah. lighting. So yeah. keyword for Gary's swap shop is lighting. You currently don't know what you've got to do in order to play along. But if you've been on Instagram today, you will have seen the bundled uh, prizes for Gary swap shop. So I'll get those. Maybe Ray will get them out of the bag for wow. me. Wow. Okay, you're Gosh. on bag. Okay. Bag so and, ooh, an EV block from flask. Trevor. Yep. Yeah, little wow. uh, thermos wow. flask. It yeah. keeps oh, things cold yeah. in oh, summer. Oh, should we have a look at? inside? Or? Uh, good oh. luck opening that. Looks a bit, <laughs> looks a bit, looks a bit solid. That packaging. We've got uh, a Wago box. Okay. We've got a, a safe a isolation fix. kit. Oh, Ooh. it looks like a pencil case. What's in well there? done, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a padlock and all the bits in there for safe isolation. Really <laughs> important to us, that Our is. Luck. Yeah, and the QR code yeah. on there, if Ray keeps it still, is the one that sends you to the CPD. Yeah, thank yeah, you for those okay. people who have done those. That's what else good, is in there? That's good. Ray? All sorts. There were some Tic Tacs, but we ate them. Oh, wow, look. <laughs> yeah, Trevor bought a hat. Okay, yeah. and we're going to, we'll put a complimentary packet of Oh, hang Tic -tacs on, there's a there. bonus track. Bonus oh, is track. A bonus? Yeah. Two, yeah. Two boxes. A two two boxes. Boxes. We have Wago with us last yeah, on. Yeah. Okay, back on main cam. So, we've got Love two it. sets of those. Okay, we've got two sets of those to give away. I'll just put some more. Tic Tacs in that one. And if you want to play along, it works like the following. This is the one prize that you don't win tonight. There are other prizes. Gordon's got a great prize for the GT time. And we've also got 10 spot prizes to give away. We'll yeah. come to that in a minute. Yeah. Let's stay on Gary's Swap Shop at the moment. So in order to play along for Gary's Swap Shop, you have to put the word, can't remember what it is, Ray. What's the Lighting. Word? Lighting the word into tonight. the comments now. And if you win, in other words, you're pulled out in the prize section, which is unfortunate. We always leave it right to the very end of these live streams, don't we, Gordon? Right we do. at the end. We do, yeah. So you know, it's almost like you have to stay on to find out if you've won. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's always a top tip to stay out at the end of videos, actually, Gary. He's there. Yeah, but I'll just... Uh, oh, is that the end of that, is it? I'll just draw, draw a veil over that, really, and just put that away in the cupboard till next year. 
Okay, that April links time. In, that, <laughs> round about the start of April, yeah. we'll do that. And you can relax into your, you know, have a nice round of golf at the weekend or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I can take the wife now, which is quite nice. Me yeah, she's allowed in. Old, she's yeah. allowed in yeah. down yeah. at the old golf club. Well, major, major yeah. progress. Yeah. Yes, major progress <laughs> to be able to let your, your wife in at the golf club. Um, yeah, so we turned you to drift away there. That, yeah. I'm glad that door's been closed. We'll closed that yeah. door. Yeah. I'd imagine one or two have been closed for us as well, I would suggest. <laughs> 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 Metaphorically. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, for all those. So in order to play along for Gary Swap Shop, two people at the end of the show will be pulled out randomly and it will be done by Joe, who's up in the gallows. And you have to send me something in order to get your prize, which is really disappointing because last time it was a massive Wago bundle. Did we have any five amp connectors turn up at Lionside Studios? No, we didn't. No. We didn't have any five amp connectors. So therefore they still sit there unclaimed for. In order to win Gary's bundle this week, which has been supported by Trevor at EV Blocks, you have to send me in a ceiling rose. I don't mind if it's just a ceiling rose, it can be a ceiling rose and pendant, it only needs to be the small back plate in order that you can pop it in the post. If you win, you pop that in the post, plus your name and address of where for me to send the prize out and a lovely letter telling everybody how I'm your favourite member of the eFix team in order to win that prize as well. Yeah, you remember how he does letters out, Gary? So. <laughs> and the amount of times I say that, and they, they, some, some have suggested they're like you, Gordon. Yeah? I didn't realise we got to the snowbirds in the UK, yeah, yeah. back in the old homes. You can imagine pushing them out in their chairs, can't you? Yeah. Sitting around the telly, oh, it's Gordon. Oh, he's, he's a lovely young we man. We reach around, we reach a wide argument. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. There's a wide audience that Gordon reaches. <laughs> Okay, so that's Gary Swap Shop if you want to play along. Um, I obviously said dead, uh, obviously they'll be drawn out right at the end of the show. However, Gordon, you can address this camera over here because it's, I think, time for the register. It is a register. Well, let's see who we've got in tonight. So I'll go right back up to the top. We've got uh, Sean Dempsey, as ever, as all on there. Billy Torrey, all the way up in Scotland. Uh, Air Spark One, the Richard Brookett sockets. Oh, sockets, actually. That chair a bit wobbly down there, Gary. Just, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take one of those put, off for you. Put yeah, one of those under the, uh, yeah, under the wobbly just, chair. Um, we've got a bit Hen Henny Visor, uh, Big Ash Electrics, as ever, Carl Robinson, William Kelly, uh, Aaron, as ever, above Aaron, Daddy B, RM Shipley, Electrical, Ozo, Ozo, Darren Martin, Sparky 400T, Andrew Brown, the person who you always forget you met down at... Um, Spent an hour with Andrew, like Andrew. Tottenham. Mrs. Hayes is on. Yay! Uh, early years learning. Richard Gaunt's on. Who's Richard? Richard? Yeah. He used to work for us. He left, didn't he, last week? Oh, he's on holiday this week. Oh, he's yeah. on holiday? I, I warn you now, Richard, it's an absolute bomb site when you get back in. So all that good work you've done, we've <laughs> done while you've been away. So Terry Moore, Dan the Sparky in training, Gadget Man 36, MB Electrical... Alan Chan, I think we're getting the MB Electric, well done him. Uh, Sparky 400, uh, 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 Erasmus Rainier, I was, I was poised in there. Uh, secret millionaire, Craig Gifford, Gifford's Electrical. He's not into his football, he's on. Yep, yep. Um, Tom Bickerton, they're a good regular. Terry Moore, uh, that tool guy, also used to be known as Torchy. Sparky Rider, Mustafa Ibas. D. Smale, and I think we're oh, Booktak Papuk. There we go. Oh, uh, people okay. are testing me tonight on these. Uh, LIA, X Forces Electrician, the UK Spark. Ooh, they're, they're coming up soon. Yeah, on that. James Bailey, uh, Sparky Rider. I think that is. About it, if I missed it. Richard Cockerline. There you okay. go. I think I'm done. Tom Bickerton's a good example. Tom Bickerton won a prize one week, didn't he? Yep. On Gary's swap shop and probably didn't quite get to the end. So oh, I so never he didn't find it. out he'd won. No, Tom, you did win one one week, so uh, you got pulled out randomly by Joe. Are all the sounds good, Joe? Are you listening in to us? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. So we've got a sound check as well. So we will uh, obviously pull some more names out because that's the way we're going to win one of the other prizes, isn't it? Because the theme is about lighting, isn't it? So we're mm. going to be talking about lighting as we go through. Yeah. So we can just see those prizes yeah, before just, we just go for our little there, segment. Trevor, we've got there. Yeah. So let's have a little Do you look. know what that is, Trevor? That's for keeping the dust out of your eyes. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we've got one of, the, we've got one of these to give away. We've got 10 of those to give away. 10 of these to give away as yeah. well. And that doesn't require people to do anything other than when we ask for some great questions, have some great questions in about lighting. Do you agree? Mm, that's okay. it, one. Good questions about lighting. And obviously I'm on the chat so I can, I can pick out the ones I like. All right. Um, oh, so, so again, the other week we had a Routledge win a prize, didn't they? Yeah, no relation. No, really? Yeah. And they're super they're nice. Yeah. There, yeah. so there you go, you can use them as a hat. We did a short video on those day dust catchers. Uh, and it went really well on TikTok, Instagram, places like that. LinkedIn, oh, it kicked off. 
Oh, did he? Yeah, he really? kicked off big style because Richard was wearing a mask to demonstrate that oh. actually everybody uh, <laughs> was a mask with a beard and all the health and safety people kicked off about masks and beards and stuff like that. And the only oh. safe way is to have a shave first, that was it. Like, really? And it's quite ironic because when we did one before, I didn't wear a mask, so we made sure we wore a mask in this one and we caused ourselves a problem in reverse. Yeah. Okay, so, so if you're going to do that, you've got to be clean shaven. Yeah, but the idea of the video was to show the advantage of using the dust catcher. Because it kept all the dust in it and the mask was just there to cover just ourselves to from, the, from yeah. the previous okay. time. Okay. Previous so, time where I took go. a pummel in. Okay, that makes logical sense. Yeah. Now we've got some more photographs before we come down. We're going to ask for some lighting questions in, in a minute that Ray's going to hopefully ask you through. All the great ones will get one of those sent out to them and we'll explain later on in the show how you can send your address to us if you're a winner. But we've got some photographs, um, Gordon. We can start off with a consumer unit. We know our audience loves a consumer unit. Yeah, so let's, let's have a look in the House of Horrors. So this one sent in this week uh, by, by a viewer. Uh, oh, I like that. So, yeah, but this one was sent in by a viewer. So I like <laughs> no, it. It, was, it was. It was, it was Simon, age 12, from <laughs> Lemington Spa. He said <laughs> no, in Indy. No, yeah. it was, uh, so he's just moved into this house. Uh, obviously, the consumer unit's a little bit old. We'll ignore the fact it's got a, uh, a different manufacturer circuit breaker on the, uh, the right-hand side there. But yeah, not, not ingenuity, I would suggest on the end there. Ingenuity, of I would course, suggest. Someone solving a problem. Absolutely, overcoming a problem, yeah. maintaining the. But that's actually supply. not the main bit we're looking at. So we've okay, got the so, next, so, next so, slide, please, so, Gary. So, so you're saying that's good? We're moving on. Okay, next yeah. slide. So we can see there an electricity meter. Yeah. Yeah. No problem so far. I can so see that. That looks okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously you can see, I mean, you, you're probably going to be thinking about those tails, Gary, not properly no, actually, supported. The two bottles of pop I was looking at there. And I was actually think, I was trying to work out whether the one on the right was um, something like one of those dandelion and burdocks with a 10p returner for the, uh, was it Corona or some woman back in your day? Uh, bar. Bar, was it? Bar. Oh, right, okay. AG yeah. Bar, Scottish beer. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah we're, we're digressing there. So, there I'm, so I'm worried about what, the, the tails? Uh, yeah, you, you'd think those tails aren't properly supported, wouldn't you? You'd like to well, see probably clips so, or, in there. I'd like to see some support. You could tie wrap them to the other ones, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's what we've got there. You've got your bottles of pop. Yeah, that's um, quite good. Yeah, so just move to the next one. Then. We'll no, well, I'd just like to say some good things there. If you look at the top of the cutout, I think you've got the two plugs in there to keep the IP rating up. Well, there you go. Yeah, good that's little good. spot for me, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Okay, nothing, nothing to see so far. Okay, nothing to see so far. That's a bit odd how that angled piece of wood's been screwed there to that fixed structure. I yeah. would be a bit concerned on that, but again, I suppose it's replacing the meter board that the meter has come off. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, just bring the bring the next one in. Just that's I can't, there's nothing, nothing to see here. Let me see that. There's a hand oh. on that board now. You see, it's not a hinge on the left hand side of that board, is there? Yeah, there is a hinge. So just go. And just see just we're going to go on to one more and back again. Yeah. Ah. So the meter box, the meter's on a hinged door. Okay. Yeah. Now, ingenuity, great, actually, because yep. this is obviously before meter box. Just go back to one of the earlier photographs. Look at that. You've got a little glass window there. Okay. Oh, okay. So you can read the meter. So you can read the meter. There's lots of good things there. This is early innovation. Yeah. So that's the, the, the old meter on the hinged cupboard door. Uh, yeah, obviously the big problem, and, and we've got a well, whole series of videos <laughs> out there, is obviously moving those meter tails backwards and forwards on a hinged door. Yeah, probably not the best, um, no. not, not the not best the, advice in the world. No, we've got um, Rob Weller, Dr. Rob Weller, who's a forensic investigator. I don't think that's his job title. I just called him a forensic investigator for the three videos that I did with him, just because it sounds so great. Um, actually goes into installations where there's been electrical fires and um, obviously cases where people unfortunately have perished in those fires and there's obviously a massive process, police first to arrive, there's obviously an insurance claim, there's obviously somebody comes in to, to, to apportion blame and that's where Robert came in, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and the majority of times it was at the mains end because that's obviously where the most amount of current's been drawn and he said if you could attribute a lot of that to movement, didn't you Gordon, that was his thing. Yeah, yeah. So if you could hold a termination in place and have it to the correct torque setting, and it was part of our talk series, those videos are due to be released. But he said when it's unsupported and there's movement involved, that's it. And he talked about conductors running away, didn't even get cherry red. It's great, great video. It, yeah, the, yeah, the bloke. For those who are invested in those videos, if you watch the other one, we did a uh, electrician's round table on um, RCDs, didn't we? Yeah. And we, we broke that bombshell news six months probably before the IET released that of the book they did. I can't remember mm -hmm. what it was. Had some pages wrong in it, I heard once. I've got to let it go, Gary. I've got to let it go. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, we said about the RCDs being tested on AC and we tested in, uh, on the AC setting only at one time. And obviously that came out under the amendment too. But yeah, he would say there, that's a fire waiting to happen. That's guaranteed, isn't it, almost? Yeah, well, that was my advice back to the, uh, somebody, what do you think of them? I said, well, I think you contact your uh, meter provider because it's their, uh, that's their job to move it. 
and, and move the pot bottles. So perhaps put the pot bottles on the shelf and put the meter back on the wall. Yeah. And uh, these days you don't need that little glass window. To remote, they can remotely meet the meter. These days you don't need the little window. So great. It's a good bit set. Yeah, yeah. It's a good bit set. But again, thank you. That was, that was what was it, Simon 12 from Leamington Spa? No, no, no. I didn't, uh, I didn't say with name who it was. We didn't want the, uh, oh, you right. know, the meter. People get a bit uh, upset oh, sometimes. Okay. So okay. that's good. the. Uh, no yeah. worries. All right. Thanks for sending them in, Ray. <laughs> okay. So um, <laughs> no, no, no. it's Trevor, actually. <laughs> 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 what is that window for? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a strange window under the stairs. That's a, yeah. So, yeah, that's. that's, that's one of those. So questions now. We'd like you to start thinking about your questions to do with lighting. Ray, give, give us an example of something we're going to talk about uh, when we get to our lighting section and therefore so you can generate some questions. Well, we're going to talk about colour rendering. Yep. We're going to talk about colour temperature. Um, you know what this is? Do you? Yes? Y yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. The yeah. difference between them. And we're going to talk about <laughs> down lights. We're talk about light pollution. And we're going to talk about the big light. Do you remember the big light you used to have in your living room? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> really? so we're talk about really? that. You went there. Did we're you? talking about oh. exit signs, uh, controls, and all jolly things like that. Keep, you know, mm -hmm. keep Are you a lighting person, Trevor? I like lighting when it's done right. But so many times you see someone, oh, we put some lights in, and it's lit up like Blackpool. You're like, yeah, great. That's because you were in Blackpool, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> when it's done right, I think light is yeah. like super effective. Good. But I think people think light is light. In other words, how much light can you cram into an area? And I know even yeah. coming down to your place and, and seeing how you lit rooms to start with, I was stumbling around in the dark. But actually, no, it was actually a better light for the, the, the room in which you were trying to create the atmosphere in. And we'll have a look at some of those. So whether it's lighting stories that you've had yourself, it might be that you were asked to do something and you, and you tried to talk customer out of it. It might be that you've found a new way of smuggling lights, and we do like a smuggled in light, don't we? Yes. We What's do. the best lights that you can smuggle in? What type of lights would they be? Yeah, lead tape, I would say. LED strip for those people who speak English. <laughs> okay. so, uh, yeah, lead tape. Least, yeah, lead tape. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come come back to that at some point. I think it's uh, time to honour one of our gentlemen. Yeah, we'll look, I mean, look at this. I mean, let's, let's oh, just bring, right, 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 I'll bring is, in closer. Are you drinking this brand these that days? That is pretty handy, that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'm not seeing scammer, you mate. Drinks. Yeah. yeah. So, so to honour Ray, who's been in the lighting industry well, for, for seventy yeah, for seventy five years. years. That's an absolute trick. Oh look at this. Gosh. Look at this. What is this? All those Whoa. years of service. Something like a bit of tipple, yeah. maybe. Well, we, well, well, there's a bit of Irish in you. Well, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, wow. for seventy five well, years in lighting. This. this is not. That's good. Okay. How do well, I, we can uh, open it now. I think it should be chilled. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, what? What? <laughs> okay, well, that's the retirement gift. Well, <laughs> retirement gift of all retirement gifts, that is, isn't it? Also, it's the champagne of industrial sockets. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this? This is a three-phase industrial... Uh, what is this? Single phase, right. Oh, Single right. phase. All right, okay. okay. <laughs> check, check the number what? of connections there, Ray. <laughs> okay, what goes on in here? Okay, Ooh. wait, whoa, whoa, watch. Oh. Wait, what's in here? Look, you see. Or some uh, secret stash. Yeah, we, in there. yeah we've, we've heard that before. Right. <laughs> what is it, Gordon? Because this yeah, is so our. This is the Scarme Proxima. Okay. Yeah, so this new. Now, look at this. Now, I, I like getting a bit excited about mechanisms here. Yeah? So think of this door here. How easy is that to get in? I mean. It whiffs of Italian design. Oh, I've had the designers in again. We're not from Scarme, from their isolators. But, yeah, do you like that, Charlie? I like that. A like gloved that. hand. You look like a man who wears a glove now and again. Possibly down the golf course. Saves your hands. Like I mean, look at the state of them now. It cuts all over them. So. <laughs> well, you should do. Yeah. Well, wear some gloves <laughs> and you can still operate that mechanism. Yeah, grand, isn't it? I right. think we've got some rounded corners there as well, Gordon. And with the, the detailing. Smooth. Yeah, look at that. Little, little bit of round. Look at that. External mountings. Not very good for getting the STS drilling, though. You mean, you're going to need a long drill bit to get your 5.5 all the way through there. And I think, Trevor, what people in. these days, what they're doing is actually marking the wall first. Oh. And then they drill the holes <laughs> and then go back in, you know. Things have moved on. It's not nice we're work. Not it's fixing, nice work. We're not fixing concrete blocks, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we can, use, we can use that marksman, can't we, in order to... to sorry, Sharpie <laughs> pen in order to mark those, uh, those fixing positions. That is a touch of quality, that is. Mm. Are we looking at these at any point? Yeah, I've got a review coming up on these. So we'll, uh, well, we'll probably have to hand it over to Richard to fit somewhere, which means we get another outdoor socket. Because uh, he did fit the GRP one last time. He did. And that yeah. was... Uh, but again, let's look at, look at that. The that presentation <laughs> box is just a thing of beauty. Look at this. That is gorgeous, isn't yeah. it? So wow. I don't know whether when you order them, they come with those. But, but when uh, you retire, yeah, they do. So <laughs> congratulations on retiring, Rain. We're pleased to pass that one on for you. Imagine you getting a pallet of those. You'd be like, yeah, look at this, yes. boys. 
Yeah. There you go. Tell you mm. over, folks. Look at that. So we like to call that uh, tonight's sneak peek. Um, just remind yeah. me of the name because you've got a lovely name. It's a Skarmer Proxima. Yeah, the Proxima. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that is tonight's sneak peek. We did a torch last week, so that's that's what each end of the spectrum, I would suggest. There's something that utilitarian, everybody needs a torch. There's something that arrives in a box and looks like it's uh, been matured for, oh, I don't know, 40 years. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Mm. yeah, talking of things that have been matured for a long while. What's next, Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> Your retirement, Gary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gary's six years coming up. I genuinely can't wait. I've been planning my retirement for some time. Yeah, now. we have to. You have the box fee and everything like that. <laughs> Sixteen and a half. Yeah, so it yeah, looks like a, a scared <laughs> face. Oh, there we go. I'll, I'll take that every day of the week. Mm. It's better than I got when I left the college after 18 years. Did you leave under a cloud or something? I, well, I, I left on my own. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got to take Joe with me. So that was me leaving present, so that's all good. Right, yeah. so uh, talking to Joe, I think, uh, I think it's time to slip into a regulation corner. Oh, it is, yes. Do, well, time we, already. Should we have now some time, a... time in regulation corner, see what he's been up to? He's been looking at the uh, brown book. The brown book? The brown have, book. We, have, we, have we got a copy? It's tucked away, Gary. Okay, by the golf clubs. Best left there, just, by the golf clubs. Just beyond the golf clubs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's see if we can find Regulation Corner and see a good friend, Joe. Mm. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome to Regulation Corner. Take a seat. Get comfortable. Maybe pour yourself a drink. Well, here we are, a couple of three weeks deep into the Second Amendment to the 18th edition of BS 7671, and of course, some things have changed. This is, it goes without saying, the very nature of existence, from the macro scale of the universe, stars and planets, through the lives of plants and animals, to the micro scale of atoms and their subatomic building blocks. Always shifting, ever changing, but somehow, always the same. And it's those unchanging, seemingly constant elements that we at times cling on to for comfort, even when they shift over time. And this is nicely illustrated by what you can see in my picture frame here. It's a Vargo 221 inline connector. As long as electricity is used to power our lives, there will always be an unchanging requirement for connections. And this fact has put me in mind of a regulation that survived the cleansing fire of Amendment 2. It's Regulation 526.3, and it reads as follows. I'll be using my digital copy. Every connection shall be accessible for inspection, testing, and maintenance, except for the following. Number one, a joint designed to be buried in the ground. Number two, a compound filled or encapsulated joint. Number three, a connection between a cold tail and the heating element, as in ceiling heating, floor heating, or a trace heating system. Number four, a joint made by welding, soldering, brazing, or appropriate compression tool. Number five, joints or connections made in equipment by the manufacturer of the product and not intended to be inspected or maintained. And number six, Equipment complying with BS 5733 for a maintenance-free accessory and marked with the symbol MF and installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Now it's that last bullet point that really hits home in connection with the Vargo 221 inline connector. And we've discussed maintenance-free connections here on the channel a number of times, so please take a look at those videos when you get a moment. But it's somehow comforting to find consistency and continuity, if you'll pardon the pun, when a whirlwind of change is winding you in its chains. It's as if the writers of BS 7671 have taken a long, hard look at the changes in Amendment 2 and said, no, this is the line. This is where we take our stand and say to the engulfing and all-consuming changes happening in our industry, this far and no farther. We've taken on surge protection, individual RCBO protection, and the ever controversial arc fault detection device, but we will never surrender our Vargo inline connector. Or maybe, just maybe, I'm reading too much into this. 
and it's simply a regulation in a technical standard created by a committee that didn't think to change it. Who knows? I'll let you be the judge of that, and I won't keep you any longer. Thanks for stopping by, and the next time you're passing, drop in, say hello. You know there's always a place for you here at Regulation Corner. Good night. Someone's asked the question and we've got the answer. Oh, jeez, you're not the caller as well. Yeah, good, good. when I say the yeah. mics are on, yeah, we've got the answer and he's wandered off, folks. So that was a nice little end to Regulation Corner. Brilliant again, as always, to have Joe in Regulation Corner. And uh, obviously uh, going in against the Wago connection. It was great to be joined by Wago last time out. Two weeks ago, we had our first ever double guests. It did. And now we've gone and done it again. And so again, coming up on the challenge very soon. Yeah, they will. A pair of them did the challenge. Well, only one of these has done the challenge all so far. And Ray's done it, so you can't, uh, mm -hmm. you can't say now you've recovered from that yes. experience. Yeah, it just, um, yeah, it took most of the day to do that, didn't we? So that was. <laughs> and people have asked us about the t-shirts. Actually, so Ray's got a t-shirt. So these are limited so, yeah. edition. You only get one of these t-shirts if you're size medium, because that's all we've got left. So do you want to put and it into the camera? So it's you uh, around, turn around. Yeah. And if you, uh, yeah, if you take the electrician's challenge, so next time, Trevor, you could get one of those. Bring it on. Yeah, can't mm -hmm. wait. But the uh, but again, you've got to get in a medium. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it might be a little bit of work to get into a medium. I'll get, in, I'll get in shape for the challenge, and then I'll fit in the shape. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought you did. The, you do a lot of karting, didn't you? A little mini karting. Is do that? Do you have to? Is your base weight taken against your car or overall driver? Um, and is there a car. limit? No, there's no upper limit, but you do have to hit one seven seven. So you could slim you down like a jockey. You could sweat it off all day and get yourself as light as you possibly could. Nearly. So fat boys class, which I'm in. Your really? driver's got to be 82 or 84 kilos. Oh, so it's with aspirational then to be in that one. So yeah, I mean, I, I would love to be 84 or 82 kilos. Yeah, that'd be grand. Yeah. That's a, a bit way to go. So I don't need so much lead on my car. Oh, so they, 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 they take everyone to the same weight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, could, class is so you could drive around with your EV blocks on the back, one of them lighter ones then, just to bulk yourself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 we're doing, doing wheelies <laughs> going around yeah. the track. <laughs> Oh, right, so everyone's the same weight then? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it is yeah. like riding horse and as such, but with, with, with effectively everybody at the same rate rather than a penalising weight. Pretty much. And then you've got seniors, which is like... Seniors? Are you in that category as well? You're up and coming kids, as it were, but they're still young and not got so many cakes in them. So they're 162, their race weight is. Right. No, I didn't know the Lord okay. of them up. I didn't yeah. know. It was, like, it was like horse racing, basically. So you've got to hit a minimum weight when you finish the race. Right, when you finish. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So so they weigh you, you don't yeah. you? Wow. Yeah. Oh, so, 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 you, so you go karting around KFC or something, guy, then? <laughs> People are just sort of loading <laughs> up as they go around. Is that the idea? <laughs> and when you at the end. Imagine Mario Kart, I mean, all the fast food joints around the track. <laughs> yeah, 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 throwing yeah, burgers yeah. at each other. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we've, we've to, I think we're into lighting now. This is where <laughs> we, we're, we are. We're, we're into Ray's section now. Yes. So, do you want to start yeah. with a photograph? Do you want to start off with a debated photograph? Let's take a picture. Yeah, why not? Okay, so I'm bringing this one up first. It's our, it's our good favourite, right? That is the downlight. And the thing about downlights is electricians love downlights. I mean, the only way to get one off in a, a spark is to prise it from their cold, dead fingers. <laughs> they, you know, it, is, it is the default option for lighting any space. But look at that. Is that a well-lit space? I would, is, say, yeah. I would say it isn't. I would say it is. I'm, 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 I'm pricing per point here, right? So I'm thinking that's fantastic if the customer wants all of those at 85 notes each. That's uh, easy, easy morning's work. I don't think you're giving the customer a satisfactory outcome, though. If I'm, if, you know, if, you know, allow me that. You know, the, the walls look spludgy and messy. The top of the walls are dark. The ceiling is dark, and you just put light on the floor. Well, so that's let's, let's unpack this because this is. I don't believe this is always the fault of the. Electrician. So the electrician will have, will, somebody goes, I'm having a room done. Mm -hmm. I've got the big light, like mm -hmm. I've got at home. I want the big light down. Yeah. And the first default position is obviously I want down lights. Yeah. I want to go LED because yeah. they'll save some energy and then put them in. Yeah. So that's not necessarily the fault of the electrician. The electrician more often than not is being requested. And, it's, and how long would you say it's oh, been 15, true. 20 years? This oh, at least, at least. Oh, the acne oh, of the ceiling oh, has been around? 25 years? Yeah, since we had the MR16 and the thing is, it, 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 it's a false choice between the big light and, a, and an array of LEDs. I think you need to do other stuff, you right. know? Okay, so, so the big light just flattens everything. I mean, I, always, I love the big light. We say, turn the big light off, Dad, so we can watch the, watch the telly properly. <laughs> that was the big thing. And then, you know, LED, you know, down lights came in. It was a, and put an array there. And all, all they do is they put splodges of light on the floor. Okay, so, 
So this is where you're going to need to educate us people, the, mm -hmm. the mere electricians, mm -hmm. me, me and Trev, mere electricians. So splodges are light on the floor, but that's what the customer wants. And obviously it creates a certain pattern. It must yeah. be a pattern that's favorable because you go in a lot of places and have got it. So, so if I'm not going to light the floor necessarily, what should I be lighting? Well, I, you know what I'm a big fan of is, 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 a, is a 15 amp socket around, a circuit, a lighting circuit around, and putting light you know, um, where it's needed. You know, in a, in a lounge, for instance, you need freestanding lights, table lights, lead tape, LED strip, as you call it. Yes. No, no, uh, no, no, no. You know, that's, and that's a restful, relaxing place for entertaining, for having a drink, for watching TV, for relaxing, you know. So, so we're taking lights out. So we're asking. Yeah. So we might, we might potentially go into, let's go a living area. So it's got a big yeah. light and that's the living room. And we're actually saying to them, maybe we have sort of five amp socket outlets controlled maybe yes. by a switch or Correct. controls. Correct. And we've got those sort of lamps on. So yes. that automatically brings light into corners and areas of there. Mm -hmm. And then smuggling any of the lights. Is that what you're saying? I would say I would say lead tape is great. I mean, lead tape has a has a, has a position in on, under cabinets, under shelves. I mean, it's the, you know the, the 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 uses are endless. Okay. Um. So yeah, I would say rethink a space. Don't just always default the big light or or down lights. Down lights have can have their place, but for general lighting in a in a room, I don't think they they love, don't like people well. You know, if you stand under a down light, you just you know you get shadows on people's faces. People don't look nice, and it's it's. And it doesn't doesn't let a room well. So Where you've been going wrong, Gary? All these years, yeah. stood under that down yeah. light, yeah. <laughs> scaring the kids yeah. away. The best light that Gordon looks in is one that's turned off. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's in a dark room. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to bring in the next photograph, which yeah. is it looks like. Yeah, well, put on, put on. There's the big light. Show us the big light there. Uh, this one, yeah. yeah this is the big light. It's a traditional big light. We've all been there. We've all had this, and uh, we've, we've all just grown finished up watching with that. Dallas, and we? we've all watched Dallas. Now on to the next one. Okay, well, let's just absorb that for a moment. Yeah, so, there, there, so, there you are. That's where you watch Dallas. Would you suggest yeah. that's at night that's been taken? Because it looks like there's a window. That looks like everything's no, on in the day. No, that is a daytime shot. And that shot came from Barrett Holmes, if I'm allowed to say so. Okay, well, that you just have. No, you're not. <laughs> that is a contemporary <laughs> shot. That's actually, people are still doing that in 2022 and putting it up for as for sale. So, um, yes, they okay. are. Okay, so that's now, my, my lounge done. So. That's a lot of lounge. Go on to the next one. Yeah, I, the next I, one I, I do genuinely yeah. like. Now, look, they've still got the big light. Alone, but, yeah. but it's Few dimmed down, down. It's not doing any work. It's not doing any work, the big light. It's just look, sitting there looking pretty. We've got your LED strip that you love. We've They're got smuggled a, into books, isn't it? They're smuggled. Yes, well, actually, that, there's a bit of nice creativity. Got LED, LED uh, in, in the shape of a book in, interspersed in the uh, in that that library it does not look fantastic it does i've seen it in gordon's house as well i've seen it yeah, up close gordon's and copied this idea i, I copied that whole room i think actually it was yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 now they do have some down lights to pick out the flowers ah. to pick out you can see them so, so they're, they're pushed closer to the walls yes and so picking out the curtains you've got two on the curtains over there on the right you've got a freestanding light there um as well that's i'm sure that's that's wired back to a scene setting system Okay. Or on a circuit. Now, isn't that a lovely space? You want to be there, but you go into that space. You don't think this is a well lit room. You think this is a lovely room. You don't yep. quite know why. It's what the lighting's doing ah. the work. Yeah. So, so the best lighting is almost like you don't notice. Correct. Oh. Correct. Correct. And it's the same in a restaurant. Or Come hotel. again. I've got something right. <laughs> <laughs> I did that last time. I did that twice. I'll, get, I'll stand up there if I get something right. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Completely different atmosphere. So what we tend to do is throw lots of light into a room because mm -hmm. we think the brighter it is, that mm -hmm. makes it a great room. Actually, mm -hmm. bringing the lighting levels down yeah. creates a better atmosphere. Well, what a simple rule is, you know, have fewer, uh, less bright um, lights in a, in a space okay. rather than... I mean, I think house builders have, have to take a lot of the blame here. They've always been like, put a bright light in the middle of their pendant, a central pendant, big light number. And I think we need to, we need to move on from that. Come on. Come on. I apologize. <laughs> apologize. It sounds like it's my fault. Okay, yeah, we do need, do need to move on there. So, but that's, 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 pushing, that's pushing light maybe towards walls, but then we can start maybe lighting areas at a lower level. So lighting the floor, but being a lot closer to the floor, is that something that you well, think is a good trick? Well, no, I think concealed lights, I think, I think, and uh, come back to lead tape, I think that's great under, under, um, under shelving, under cabinets, in soffits, in coving. You know, and just be creative with it. I mean, in a bathroom, there's loads of places you can put lead tape. And you don't need a lot of light in, in a bathroom, for instance. People no, put in a lot of stuff. I wouldn't put a lot of light in Gordon's bathroom, <laughs> yeah, would you? Yeah. You don't want to be stumbling yeah. around there in the dark. Just near the mirror. You've got loads, you need loads of light near the mirror, Gary. <laughs> he likes himself. He needs to see himself. Yeah, he needs yeah. to see himself, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay. I did so, that at my gaff and put some LED tape across uh, the front of my house. Switched it on first night. And I'm like... 
oh yeah it looks nice but it lights up all of the front garden and halfway across the road i'll put a dimmer on that i think it's got to be the right light level there's no good light in your house you soffits up yeah and you, you see it when you're driving home in the winter you're like oh they've had some outside lights yeah nice where do you live are you near peterborough yeah yeah i thought i passed your house on the train <laughs> i could see it about 10 miles away yeah, so that was the one. I, thought, I, thought, I thought the aliens had landed i was that devastated i switched it straight off i was like i can't leave that on i, I was guilty i was guilty for in our first house because you get your first house and you're going to do because you're an electrician you'll do everything you possibly can so i was this was for oh, 20, 20 odd years ago. So I put, I put, I had, a, I had a box front window, so it had nothing underneath it but gravel and some lovely bushes. So I lit that. Then I, I put a big, a big spotlight, floodlight over the park, sort of the path stroke parking area that I went. And at the front of it, the, where the garage was, I inserted a couple of lights inside the soffit, just two in there. So when I reversed in and all the rest of it, and I had it on a photo cell. So if I went out, and then came back, obviously, they'd automatically be on. This was way before controls were any good. Wow. So I did all that, so lovely. And then one time I came back round the corner and there was two lads in my cul-de-sac playing football. So I come round oh. the corner, so I parked up, so straight in the middle of them, not my drive, just straight into where they were, just pulled the car up there to stop the football game. And I, and, I, and I looked up and I thought, ah. So when I went in and turned the lights off, our cul was dark as anything. So the only reason they were playing football is I gave them a pitch to illuminate in the evenings. Yeah, we soon changed that. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't good. Well, a couple of questions before yeah. I move on. Actually, get we'll yep. put them. I can answer one of them straight away. Someone's asked, will we see the Dubai lamp in the UK? Yeah. Okay. Which um, is a special lamp that Philips developed with ultra high efficiency, and they only sold it in Dubai for a while. Okay. Uh, but the good news is, I've got one here. Oh, have you? So we're doing a review on that. Uh, did we not show that week. in the video that we did on April the 1st? It wasn't that the lamp? We did, actually. And I've, it, it says lamp, but actually it says on the front, it says LED bulb, Gary. <laughs> right. so really? There's nothing yeah, right. It says LED bulb. There's absolutely the nothing more about that. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so this is absolutely coming. So that was from that was from Rob Holmes. So put his name on a, on a dead. He's got a dead coming his way. So if you go to get that dead, go in the description below, you'll see the uh, Get Involved tab. If you follow that link, uh, you say you've won something. Say what you've won. Give us a give us a hint. If your uh, if your YouTube name doesn't match your real name, also give us a hint on that as well. But geez, that's big writing. <laughs> Look at that. Big team, big yeah. writing. He's gonna wear yeah. that out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So that's Rob Holmes. You got that? So, so Rob, just to confirm. Oh, go, go into the description. Right. Find the Get Involved tab. When you click on that, you'll be able yeah. to drop down to have won a prize. Leave your details. Well done, yeah. you've won a prize. So that's one. And then the second one is somebody said, and they get a prize for two things here, actually, Gary. Two things. The first thing is they said, uh, is it easy to hide the transformer for lead tape? So that, obviously it is lead tape, so that gets you a prize straight away. Why do, but, but, but how they spelt lead then? LED. So it could be <laughs> LED tape? <laughs> huh? No, it's lead tape. <sighs> get with the programme. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's, um, so yeah, but uh, he gets that because uh, we've got a great video coming up where we've got some mains powered LED tape, <laughs> or lead tape, as most of the call LED strip, uh, yeah. And that makes it very easy to uh, hide the transformer because it doesn't have one. Um, but uh, anyone else hiding the transformer, it's obviously down to the volt drop from your transformer to where your LED tape starts. Uh, and obviously, it actually makes a big difference. If we, we did a little experiment uh, the other week when we were messing around in the office losing one volt a volt drop between your drive and your led tape uh we lost a quarter of the output of the strip oh wow really? yeah so it's pretty sensitive so getting the cabling wrong can in some applications you won't see it and a mains voltage led strip 50 meter roll won't it yeah drop? unbelievable yeah. when that ip out. rated used outside yeah yeah so it means you can use it inside as well but you know, it's ip rated as well unbelievable mm. yeah wow. video coming on that yeah Just so that on. is boulders he's down as in the thing so boulders you got that one too? get involved in, in the description boulders, boulders yeah there you go. boulders yeah Yep. There we go. So there's two of them away, isn't it? Eight What's his first name? Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> just, oh, yeah. I don't think it's his real name, Trevor. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Is your real name Big T? No. <laughs> no, so uh, yeah. well. So we'll move on. What's our next picture yeah, what, to look at? I was trying to tee it up earlier, but I got cut down by Ray. So it's that one, Ray. <laughs> About lighting the floors. Oh, well, um, that is an example of, 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 uh, of you know, the, the automatic choice there would have been down lights for a lot of people. Straight down but, the middle, yeah? Yeah, but look, just putting those uh, marker lights along the floor, look how well that looks. It's just different. It puts light where it's needed, and you don't get light in the top of your head. 
Okay. Is that is that an issue? Uh, in your, <laughs> as your thing, you well, it's not, good, away? it's not good lighting. I well, don't think. Well, I like that. I think that's great. I think it's. If it, that is it, not going to put light on your head, I think the next one will. Okay. So let's have a look at the next one. So I do like that. And again, I think that's yeah, something yeah, you've picked yeah. up, Gordon. I've seen that yours on the staircase. I copy all these things. It's like give it yeah, a try. Yeah, you just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then once you do it, you'll always do it like that. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. So yeah. I don't like this. Yeah, that's that's a case of too many lights, basically, and I think I think that's an issue. You know, um, you know, you think more is more, and it's not really. So I do, I'm I'm sure that that's not even good lighting. So um, yeah, and then with the next one as well, we have. Um, so yeah. that's not enticing me to buy anything in that shop. No, so that no. lighting wasn't in, in, in increasing the experience within the shop, and we can be. Uh, Convinced with smells and lighting to part with money, can't we? So but, I wouldn't uh, thought I don't we know who did win there. The wholesaler loved that job. Yeah, yeah. yeah all those yeah. lamps and anyone who priced it per point. And it's very <laughs> flat light as well. All of those lights will just provide a really flat light on, on onto the merchandise in that store. But it looks like they've brought every single pendant through the ceiling tile, so somebody had to make that flex off at probably one end, every one. So that's a, an incredible job. Next one's brilliant. Yeah, there's too many lights. I just don't know. I don't know why there's that many there. Some salesman's done a great job, obviously, but um, yeah. So it's about thinking about what you know, what, what is appropriate. You know, using the right amount of lights, the right amount of output, and in, in, in the right application. Maybe. So that would look horrendously lit, wouldn't it? I oh, mean, that's, 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 that's do you good. even need that sort of output? I mean, what, what it's just a walkway. You did a few bollards would have done it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 good example there of lighting the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Putting light where it's needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like for a stairwell, put lights, the marker lights down the stairway. You need to see the threads. You don't need to see the and walls. We've seen like some that, lovely know. stuff on Instagram, haven't we? Of people lighting staircases. Yeah, I know. LED strip and 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 bringing they, they end up bringing the, the the step threshold forward slightly, don't they? And then smuggle it in on the effectively yes, the leading that's edge. Great. That looks, yeah, I mean, that looks great. Yeah, really you can, good. You can be creative, indulge yourself on a stairwell. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we've got I've got someone on it. Is you know, I'll take you back. The reason you end up with bad lighting a lot of the time is because nobody's ever showed you good lighting. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so people, and there's someone on, uh, Mr. AJ Scotty, obviously he teaches in an electrical laboratory, Gary, and they're still using fluorescence to demonstrate power factor. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you even buy a fluorescent with no. with a power factor correction? No, bastard. In. <laughs> then we, took, to, you know, we, we can have this discussion separately, but education will be 20 years behind. So so I thought I was leading, leading the way. We never had any... Uh, LED strip in our uh, yeah, college yeah, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. Didn't even didn't even bring it up. Yeah. You're embarrassing, really, isn't it? When you think it's everywhere. Did you teach them yeah. how to do a gridiron of downlights? No, no, no. 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 But I did. The, the better students did screw a piece of plasterboard up and put two downlights in it. Yeah. Because yeah. they always wanted. It's almost like, oh, I want to be an electrician so I can fit downlights. Really. And I was also, you know, I was probably empowering that because it was a yes. stretching exercise. Yeah. If you get it all done, you can put some downlights so in. So you were the you're to blame for this flood of downlights everywhere. Yeah. In in retrospect, yes, yes. thank you, Rand. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Make sure you don't yeah. door don't smack you on the way out, son. All right. Okay. Off you go. Okay, so that's that. So we've got given away a couple there. I've got any more? So uh, yeah, so we've got on? an interesting one here. We've got uh, so Billy Torrey. So you can put his name on there. Billy, Billy Torrey. Torrey. He's up in one. Scotland. He's there. not just won the lottery. So do LED lamps look slash bulbs? Uh, well, we'll call them lamps. They're lamps. Uh, uh, reduce the stroboscopic effect. So there's, there's two. There's, there's, there's an interesting one there. because It's got a flicker, basically. Is that what he's asking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yes and no. Is, is the, the minute you turn there. your camera on, they flick a lot mad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's so there's the traditional 50 hertz flicker that people used to the old classic one. You switch the lathe on and get it so it looks like it's, it's stopped, yeah. and mm -hmm. then put your hand in. Um, uh, so it obviously creates a problem rotating machinery, but that that was just matching the speed of the lathe to the uh, lamp frequency. But now LED lamps depends on the quality. You get a different effect of flicker, and it's one that's. Um, Certain people suffer from it more, but it, it creates the visual stress, doesn't it, on the eye? So if you're in an office that's got lamps that really flicker at a high frequency, you get headaches and all sorts of stuff. Really. But without realising flickers there. Yeah. So the yeah, flickers correct. there, yeah. you're getting headaches. You go to a doctor, I'm getting these blinding headaches, and you map it back to when they had a refurb in the office. Yeah, and someone's put in. Wow. So, so, so would say mm -hmm. budget priced <laughs> equipment. Okay. So yeah, that's not clever, is it? Yeah. How, how would you test for that? Uh, well, how would you identify it? A, a good manufacturer would list it on a product. Right. But obviously not many of them do, but it's, it's a, uh, there's a flicker index. It's quite, it really gets quite complicated. But if it's an area where people are working and doing like quite intense stuff, you know, if you like a 
cat layouts and stuff like that where you have to concentrate with your eyes and stuff and yeah flicker can be a can be a problem so. couldn't you use it with mobile phones i remember you used some mobile phones to just check how bad a life fitting was you oh we do that all the time that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put the camera on it's like oh <laughs> yeah it looks like we turned up at an 80s yeah, rave yeah, yeah. yeah it's like oh i don't think we can shoot it in this gordon's getting his white gloves on starts doing a bit of this yeah it's the only time Deal he wears a dust mask. <laughs> Straight out with a dust mask. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But again, again, I'm sure the electrician probably wouldn't have installed those if they'd have realised the problem they were creating. Got a mic problem? I said, Richardson, does the mic keep dropping out? Hmm? I don't know. Have we got any mics dropping out? We'll just have a mic check. Just check your packs are on for me. Just check they're on. Yeah, they're on. Mine's, Mine's all right. Yeah. 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 Okay, apologise if that is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> got more going on there. You right, keep going. Yeah. yeah, we keep going. Yeah, nothing to tweak there. Is it one mic in particular would help me? Is it Gordon's mic? Right, okay. So. More information needed. Yeah, we'll a little see. bit more information needed on the mics. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, yeah. is there any issues? Has Joe, Joe Robinson give us an issue on mics? Yeah. Okay. It's Richard, well, he's on holiday, he's causing trouble. Is it Richard? Yeah. yeah. Is oh, right. it? No, he's just, yeah. Yeah, okay. He started that one. Yeah. We've got some more photographs, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, let's continu continue, continue what on. We got, what do we got next? Yeah. We've got next, um, I think we're into colour temperature and colour rendering. So I think you need to just explain which problem now that this one is, is. This is light pollution, actually. Oh, is it? This is where you know you're lighting up a facade, you're lighting up a wall, or or whatever, and the light is being pointed up, and a lot of it is escaping into the sky. And this is the reason why in cities we can't see the stars anymore, because it's just this light pollution, this sky glow that you get over a city, and um, where you know the light gets diffused and you just can't see what's going on. So it's something that you always need to be thinking about um, when you're doing exterior lighting. How can I minimize it? How can I make sure that, that, that you know, and really up lighting uh, is, it, it, outdoors is, is never generally a good idea. Um, you have to be so careful. Every uh, church uh, in the UK uses well, up lights. It used to be, yes, indeed, <laughs> they shouldn't really. You're better off just to, uh, you know, illuminate some element of your architecture, illuminate the windows, illuminate some, the doorway or something like that, rather than just try and blast something with light because it generally doesn't look good. And, and that's the centre building's been lit and the rest of it's sort of caught a load of it coming off, I think. Yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's just chucking a lot of energy up into the sky. I mean, it doesn't look good. It wastes energy, it, it causes light pollution, it disturbs wildlife. Um, there's, 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 there's nothing I could say about that that's positive. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, I don't think anyone can, can <laughs> they really? Right, so we've got to yeah, yeah, yeah. that thing, isn't it? <laughs> Back before we went LED, yeah. people used to sort of be able to gauge the output of a lamp by its wattage. Yes. So if like someone said, go and get a floodlight, go and get a big floodlight, well, you've got, five, you've got a 250, <laughs> you've got a 250, a 500 or a 1,000 watt, those really big ones. And, uh, and that's so people could gauge ahead. Now with LED, people still like wattage doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, but it? still, I mean, look here. Philips is still putting 60 watts on an LED. Yeah. And it doesn't take 60 watts. That's in a 60 watt equivalent. So, uh, let's, yeah. Let's have a look at that. Because obviously I can see it and nobody else can. There's no point me seeing it. So let's see the yeah, top of the box. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so top of the box, Ray. Oh, there you go. So, 60 watt. But it's, four a, it's a four. It's actually four watts, but they put sixty larger because it's 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 basically trying to get people who are used to buying sixty watt lamp and they know how much light it gives out. But it's actually four watts. Okay. I mean, eventually, Gordon, they need to to sort of drop this. Drop the watts. No, no, drop the watts. You know, I mean, okay. You, you sounded know. like it was his fault. I like that. <laughs> eventually, Gordon. A lot of things are Gordon's fault. But, Gordon's fault. But, but, I like but, it. But so not that. Gordon, you know, on top of that, mate. Well, they're trying to educate people about lumens, but let's be honest, my mum, your dad, you know, they're not going to know how to, they're not going to ever he's, get He's trying to, to educate lumens. me on it. I yeah, just, he yeah, says yeah. to me, just say, you, you, I'll do everything in lumens now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. glue. It's, well, not it's, it's not going to catch on. It's not going to catch on. No, but that's the problem, isn't it? It's again, people think, yeah, you've got down, give us a floodlight. What's the biggest wattage you've got? Oh, we've got this 100 watt. Well, that like yes. 100 watt now could be two or three <laughs> oh. times the output of the old. Yeah. 5,000 watt flip yeah, like, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. it just gets a bit uh, crazy, a bit silly really. Right, any more questions before I move on to the next uh, slide? We've got some interest ones, Obviously, got uh, LED strip, or LED tape as we would call it, um, keeping them cool, so if you, uh, obviously, yeah, so LED uh, tape, so we made a video on this showing actually how mm -hmm. hot an LED strip can get, Yeah, and it actually does make a difference, it makes a difference in the actual light output you get at that instant. It also makes a difference in how long that light output takes to degrade. Yeah. So the cooler you keep an LED, 
uh, you get better quality light for longer. And basically. the easiest way to do it is use a... Put on aluminium extrusion. Yeah, yeah. so effectively heat sink. Correct. Yeah, because yeah, I think the big myth is with LEDs, they don't get hot. Yeah. Well, that's not that's a myth that we blew away in those videos. There's a series of videos. Maybe that's something worth I'll put worth that in there. I'll, yeah. put that in, I'll put them in the community tab tomorrow. I'll put yeah. all these links in there. Yeah. So, so that was Alex Smith, that one. You can put that one down there, Trevor. Get yeah. them, get yeah. the, Alex, get, get involved. Find no, the tab below. Get involved. Go to the thing. Click on it. Yeah. Uh, tell uh, us you want something. Uh, Send us your address. That was a good good, good question as well. I would yeah. also recommend a diffuser if you can. On, on, yeah, on we've, done, we've done that as well. Oh, you have? Okay, you're ahead of the game. No, 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 no. Yeah. Problem is, when we've made that many videos, if people find us 12 months ago, we made those videos, I think, in lockdown one, didn't we, Gordon? Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah, Went yeah. Through, through LEDs yeah. with Osram, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. With the yeah Osram. So we tried, we did yeah. cutting LED strip live and we, all sorts of stuff. That's right, you were, yeah, yeah. We did soldering. Moving on. I'll put a link for that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see Gary chasing hot metal around a bench with a, <laughs> with a, with a, attempting awful. to get it near awful. a lead strip. Yeah. Then, uh, then, yeah. then, Last yeah. time I sold an attacked a resistor at age 14. That was it, you know, trying to, oh, yeah. trying to make a bridge rectification or something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, so that's Glory them. Days. Glory bridge days. Bridge rectification. Yeah, yeah. If we'd start He's bridge, bridges again. Don't get bridges. it, we're not going into bridges, Gary. Yeah. You'll have Mrs. Hayes yeah. wanting a holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rectification bridge where we can go for our I wonder if we'd stone bridge that black one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There. <laughs> just, just get in it. You get this bringing guests in things wearing thin already on the second one, isn't it? I've got to find it. Yeah. You said earlier on, I've got to work all this. Yes, I'm working all this. I'm still talking. So we brought this one up. I, remember, I, remember, I, I couldn't do it. Okay. So what, what's that, what, what's not good about this then? Well, if you're gonna first of all, if you're gonna light something, why are you lighting it? You know, you, you do it properly or don't do it at all. That's kind of my view. This, so, so this, you can walk you know out. This so, building you can, is? so you can walk out into the garden. You can't see. <laughs> well, a lot of people are doing this in their homes. This is actually not isn't any home. This is the Queen's House in Greenwich in London. Wow. Yes, it is indeed. And uh, by Inigo Jones, a famous architect. And um, you know, they just put a couple of put LED up lights on it. I mean, it's it's terrible. Don't light it. You know, if you're not going to do it properly, don't light it at all. Whereas what the approach they could have taken would be to just put some um, lights in those window reveals, and they could be really beautiful. And oh. uh, yeah, just and no need for this big. And a lot of that lights going up into the sky, which affects bats and lots of other wildlife. So it's just not a good job. And that, you know, that's things that are being done today. That's awful. The next one, I can tell because I can see the slide before it comes in. Here it comes, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is all about colour temperature and, you know, it's classic, isn't it? You know, a lot of maintenance people just simply don't get colour temperature. So they, they change a, uh, a fluorescent tube or a lead tube as it is these days or a, maybe even an LED fitting and uh, a different colour temperature there. And uh, it drives some people, purists like me, nuts when I see the wrong colour temperature uh, that is know, awful. in a supermarket or whatever. Yeah. So... Yeah. So what we've done there is we've changed the lamps in the daylight because they've packed up the maintenance person has, and they're yeah. probably never aware of the fact they've left that behind, are they? Yeah. Or sometimes they just they just put in the wrong one and they haven't checked it. I mean, um, yeah. In in a fluorescent tube, the first three numbers tell you the color temperature. So you've got a nine two four, nine two seven, eight two seven. The two seven tells you it's twenty seven hundred K. Right. Uh, yeah, and the, the eight and the nine tell you the color rendering. So it, it does tell you in the numbers, but people don't read those numbers. Of course they don't. We're electricians. We <laughs> don't read those numbers. But what about choosing color temperature? Yeah. So it's, it's uh, you know, you're in a room, mm -hmm. isn't it? You go into the shop, you can buy things in a, in a, I've noticed now on down lights, we've got a review coming out soon of one that you can flip the color temperature from 2,700 mm -hmm. all the way up to 6,500. Wow. Yeah. It's the Ansel... Uh, yeah, it's the answer. Right. We've got the, the, and there's a few people doing it. We've, we've looked mm -hmm. at it before, but that mm -hmm. seems a, a few years ago when you used to buy a halogen lamp, it was three thousand Kelvin. That was it. That you was your, that was your it. choice. Yeah. Yes, yes. And yet now you've got a choice. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I guess but for the comments of people, if people are fitting these ones, but that comes back to something that white. Ray loves the word circular economy, though, isn't it? You put one thing on the shelf that does eight jobs. No, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. So that's been transported all across the world to get to that shelf, but only one of them that does eight jobs. You know, mm -hmm. transport eight individual items. That's mm -hmm. a that's a good thing, I would suggest. What colour temperature would you have at home? Okay. Not a clue. You wouldn't. No. Would you go yeah. for a warm? Would you choose? A, would you put a cold white one in or a? Well, let's put it this way. Well, do you not make that choice. Well, no. that Fifteen decision? years ago, I went for. I changed every light in our house, and I had autopsy white everywhere because it because I had. The warm light of the old-fashioned low transformer 
downlights and then just yep. change. I wanted it to look completely different when I changed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm now going Good. back when we get when we get enough lights here come in and we only get yes. them in ones and twos. Yeah, I'm yeah, changing yeah. rooms slowly back to a warmer light. Of course, of course. It's awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think a lot of terrible it's cultural. Mistake. If you're in, if you're in a sort of cold country, a country with you, cold winters. You winter. said cultural there, didn't you? It's cultural. Yes. yes okay. Yeah, just yeah. checking. You won't call me something there. Half, <laughs> half, half we'll get this in trouble with YouTube. Um, but you know, in the, the, the more north you go in Europe, people want warm, they want 2700K, which yeah. is the colour temperature of incandescent lamps, yes. traditional incandescent lamps, which we know and love and miss awfully. Um, but then as you go further south, countries get warmer, people like cooler colour temperatures. You go to Spain, they like, you know, 6000K, 4000K. So for instance, like if you go around London or you go around any major city and you have, you know, your ethnic barbers, your Turkish barbers, they like cool colour temperatures, so you can spot them a mile away because they'll have 6,000K. You know, the traditional English barber will have a warmer colour temperature. Because they're brought it culturally too. Because they, 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 they put in what they like, exactly. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And some countries like ultra cold. Japan famously likes very, very cold colour temperatures for some reason, and they'll, they'll happily have it in the bedroom, they'll happily have it at home, whereas we, we like our warm coziness to come home to. So it's kind of, so it is a cultural issue. Are you a warm light man, uh, Big T? Uh, cold light in the kitchen, right? Bathrooms, warm white everywhere else. Right. But if you look, like the bathroom doors open and both lights are on, you're like, oh yeah, that's quite a big difference between those yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. When you get a mismatch, it's not nice. I just, yeah. I just envisaged the uh, bathroom door open and, and we went between down the bedroom. My mind was not on those lights. No. Like, oh. Oh, there's some things you can't get out of your mind, is there? Wow. Yeah. No wonder why they call him Big T. Oh, dear me. Okay, moving, moving swiftly on there. Yeah, but you're yeah. right. Yeah, so but that transition, isn't it? So you've yeah, gone, must, yeah. you come out of the bathroom where you've got that real bright stuff into a bedroom. Yeah, that's... does that's look wrong. It does yeah. look wrong. Moving from one to another does... Yeah. Yeah, and you're right picture. about the barbers, because the Edward Scissorhands, where I go to and skip, and he's, he's Turkish, and it's, yeah, it's like, yeah, you go in there, like, whoa! <laughs> whoa yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's not yeah. just cool white lights, there's a lot of cool white lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's why my platinum hair glistens so much when I'm in there, so I think, uh, yeah. But, uh, Fillers next, I think, young man. Fillers. Mike, you didn't trouble them for a, for a number of years, did you? <laughs> no, no, back in the past. No, I didn't. Used to be a, used to be a stranger to a bar. Oh, I've got that photograph. The one where he looks like um, Coogan. Yeah, yeah, I've got that photo. Oh, dear. We've had oh, it. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. You want to make any money out of you, did you? We'll have to stop proceedings there. We didn't load that photograph. We'll have to save it for next time. Yeah. What, Coogan? No, 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 no. Who did someone say you looked like at the weekend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gary looks like Isaac Newton. <laughs> I'll take that every day away. <laughs> Twice on Sundays. He was a good looking fella by all accounts. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, then, where are you back in the room? He was until it all went wrong when something hit him on the head. But, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're carrying on. We've got yes, 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 yes. We'll carry on. Have we got any pro Keep looking for those prize winners. Yeah. Going to sneak an EV block in in a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got an insurance company here. Yeah, now what, what, unusually, this is an office, but they've got sodium lights in here, low pressure, high pressure sodium lights, but there's no colour rendering. You can't really see colours with this at all. It's just, I mean, I wouldn't want to work there. That I, I have noticed that APAN have actually changed their lights uh, since this photograph was taken. But I mean, I, I, imagine inflicting that on, on, on the poor people in your office. Yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. not good. I'll, no, give you an, I'll give you an example of, of, um, of, of colour rendering. My, my mother, uh, you know, she's 90 years old, living in Dublin, and I was, tucking, I was taking out her, her, um, her rubbish at night. So I took out, you know, the recycling. The, the composting stuff and you're still the, living and at the home. regular. No, no, no. your pocket money, is it? <laughs> so when you, you're living at home. You know, I do visit my mom. I do visit my mom. I do visit my mom. So anyway, I came out at night time, you know, and I couldn't tell the bins apart. There was a green bin for the composting, a blue bin for recycling, and a, and a black bin for the for the general waste. I couldn't tell them apart because it was under sodium light, low pressure sodium light. What? I had to take my phone out of my pocket and illuminate. And the bin I thought was the brown up. one was the blue one, and the bin I thought was the blue one was the brown one. <coughs> and that's all about color rendering. You know, you you simply if because sodium doesn't have those colors inherently in it, yep. it has a, a, 
it, it, it doesn't render them, so you, you can't tell it. So like, you look at a London tube map under, uh, under many lights, you just can't tell the different, uh, the Piccadilly line from the Victoria line. So anyway, you had to put the light on before I could do the thing. So that's all about colour Was your mum put the big light on outside your tube? <laughs> or did you ring her? I'm at the bins, mum. I don't know which put one the, it is. Put the big light on. You put the big, put light, the big on. light on, mum. Yeah, classic. Just, yeah. Absolutely classic. Right, let's yeah. bring in another picture. Yeah. So we're now down to going to miss that one out. Well, that's that's another view of that office, you know. Same one, is it? That's just so. It's an insurance company. Oh wow! Well, their corporate yeah. identity yeah. was yeah. to use orange light. Really? Yeah. Airplane. Okay. Really? So okay. Yeah. It does look slightly better in that shot than the other one. The other one did look, but it doesn't yeah. look great, does well, it? Well, it's using a street light. You know, an old old school street light in in, in an office. Yeah. Yeah, but so. colour rendering is terrible. You just you know you can't see colours properly. We've shown photographs before of, of our shirts can look different, didn't we, yeah. Gordon? In a different video we produced. Yeah. yeah. About colour rendering. There's one more to go, Ray. Um, no, in light. Another couple of good questions. Oh, we've got, got, we'll 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 so we've got one from. Uh, still the things he wants to do. No, I've got, got some things to give away. Go on in. Go. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, this yeah, is Darren yeah. Martin. You can write that on there. <laughs> so it's, uh, this is Darren Martin. He's he's won one of these. Darren Martin. Darren Martin. Darren yeah. Martin. Yeah. Uh, mixing colour temperatures are fitting I warm white and cool white in the same area. Would there be any benefit or reason to do it? I think it looks terrible. Do you? I mean, so, yeah, you, sometimes you get people, they put cooler colour temperature in the kitchen with the prep yeah. area or, uh, on, the on the work surfaces and then the dining area is in the same space and they'll have a warmer temperature there. I personally... But what about mixed? It. So you can change all of the fittings to one colour temperature. So you can change the colour temperature over the day. Oh, that's been, oh, that's great. That's brilliant. Oh, if you can make that work, that, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I do like that. Because you're mimicking natural daylight, and I think that's a really good thing to do. Yeah, that's a first good question then. That's a decent question, yeah. Yeah, and it is coming. We have got, some, we have got a video coming up on that soon where we've got yeah, some fixtures yeah. where we can tune the colour temperature and it'll automatically change Just over the day. made that video. Yeah. No, we've got that one to do here. Oh, we we made that video. Well, you'd be an expert tomorrow by it. Okay, yeah, yeah, tomorrow's yeah. video, is it? And yeah. the second question, here's one. Best, in my house. Here's one. Best lighting tips for a room with a person who is uh, hard of seeing, so partially sighted. Partially sighted, okay. So, well, they, well, they go, well, A, they're going to need a lot of light. Yeah. And, and B, um, it's like edges and surfaces like that, so you need contrast. So not necessarily with the lighting, but there should be a contrast between the colour of the surface, the colour of the... Of the of the um, of anything that could be confusing, um, so that's what I would say. Just clear delineation, um, so brightness. You wouldn't have light white, the, white light work tops, white table, yeah. white disc. Yeah, you, you yeah. want to be different colours. What is colors. the demarcation, and people can see the, the contrast. Contrast is the key there, so people can see the difference. You know, even things like the, the dinner plate should be a different colour, you know, to the to the table and all that type of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear to anybody yeah, in that space. Get away from matching stuff, yes, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's a good yeah. piece of advice. Yeah. That's a good yeah, question. Yeah. That's Mr. Yeah. AJ That's Scotty. Really good, that one. Yeah. Poised with a pen there. He'd so yeah. yeah. already given him a prize. Yeah. Get involved, Tab. <laughs> go into the description. Yeah. Get involved. Yeah. Click on that one. Go to I've won a prize. And then how often? How, how long will it take for us to get this out? What's that? These prizes. Well, uh, not sure. Be out tomorrow. Now. Be down course, tomorrow now. Course, as soon as we get them in, rapid. It'll send them to us, won't he? <laughs> yeah, send them back. <laughs> yeah. back. Joe, it's a shame we haven't got the roving mic. Uh, we sent out some lovely, lovely, we won't say what we sent out, we sent yeah. out some lovely stuff and uh, Joe did a bit of research on how to put on the address on the envelope. So our address, you know, yes. the, the, the returner's address, yeah. was bang in the middle <laughs> of the parcel he posted. And I got sent back. <laughs> no, you're right. I don't know how you thought of that, right? And then the, the place he wanted to was like drifted down into a corner. And yeah, we've, we've uh, posted stuff that we've returned to ourselves. Yeah, it's great excitement seeing the post. Yeah. He's, a, he's had a shocker. He's, he's shown me. Cut. What else has he done wrong? Give us another one. He's been to a festival recently, any Joe? Yes, yes. What, any incidents there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dropped his phone. Dropped his phone. That's not yeah. a problem at a festival. It is when it's the uh, porta loo and it's a chemical toilet underneath Ooh. it. So <laughs> he dropped it on the floor in the chemical toilet? Straight down the hall. Hole in one. Oh, oh so oh. he's got his iPhone 11, it's gone swimming in, and he said there's no way, no way he's going in for it. So he's let it go. Let it go. It's gone in there. <laughs> is there anything attached to that phone that was also quite valuable to Keeps him? Keeps his bank card in the back. So he's got to cancel his bank card? Driving licence. How long did he own that driving licence for? About a week. <laughs> Five days, he said. He yeah. let it come. It's crisp new driving oh, license. First ever driving license. Test. Oh, straight no, to a no. chemical toilet. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Joe, Joe. Yeah. 
he, he is great fun to be around <laughs> at the minute. Yeah. All these lights on his car will come on. He drove that tonight, so that's got a problem waiting to happen. Mm. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, there's one, best way of lighting trees. That's from that tool guy. So we all get on that, yeah. that tool Ooh, guy who we've right, actually yeah. met when we're down yeah, at the Excel. Really nice nice but he's blood. got a different name, wasn't he? When he's Torchy. Torchy. He was Torchy. Yeah. I'm trying to find my sweets. I'll keep going. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like trees lit from behind with, with, with um so you get the silhouette, you know, coming from behind. I think that's from the ordinary viewing. Position. Oh, it's about to say, how do you know what the and behind of a tree is? That was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> from where you're looking oh, let's at. Let's say it from. you you know from a drive viewed from a driveway or viewed from where you're gonna view. So you'd light it from behind. So the light hits the tree and breaks around yeah, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. But you do need to be careful with a tree, particularly a deciduous tree that loses leaves in winter that you're not just chucking light up into the sky. So be careful of that. It becomes light pollution then. It becomes light pollution indeed, mm. yeah. Like indeed. Top yeah. tip. What about moonlighting? I like that when you put the light in the tree. So it shines down and you get the, the oh, shadows yes, of the yes. tree branches yeah. on the floor. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's that's the more sophisticated yeah. option. You're thinking moonlighting, Gary. You're thinking yeah. you job down the petrol station. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was thinking that American sitcom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. Come on, that who was, was in it? Civil Shepherd. Yeah, yeah Civil Shepherd was a hard one. I thought you'd have got the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, can't remember. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Uh, yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah, that's yeah. how he became a star. There we go. Yeah. 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 yeah, he could have come on here, made yes. himself a star overnight yeah. like you have, right? I believe yeah. he goes on anything. I believe that was his uh, thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you, I think you do when you're a jobbing actor, don't you? <laughs> uh, okay. Only here's another one. The best way to like a garden nature pond. A garden nature pond. Ooh, that's a bit of taste. I mean, so, you know, you could have submersible um, lights uh, inside the water, um, but um, a pond, gosh, you, you, I, I wouldn't light the pond itself. I would light the foliage around it, sort of reflects off the pond. That's what I would do, uh, uh, you know, from a viewing, uh, from a viewing position. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you'd use the, the bushes yeah. to fragment the light, would you, as it hits the pond? Is that the you, idea? You can't it? really, I don't think you can really light a pond. You know, if you look at the, the the water you would have in a normal but you can't just put light on it so you can li light the light the edge around it you could use some uh, ip65 tape underneath maybe or you could do or something LED like strip, that yeah. led strip okay. led tape um or the, you could do tape. that but um or you could put some you know you can get some great submersible stuff now and if you want to put them mm. in the water yeah you can have a play around with that sort of stuff no, but don't, don't, for God's sake, just don't put light on the water because it won't look good. You'll just get a reflection of the light fitting. Yeah. Light yeah. algae. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always a lot of algae. Another top tip there. Yeah, 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 loads yeah. of algae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was some... Leah Winspear there. Yeah. Leah. That's a good yeah. question, that one. Yeah, Reminds great, great I, question, I remember, yeah. back, do you remember Home Front in the Garden? Remember that pro? Dermot Gavin? Yes, yeah. yes, Dermot Gavin. I once, Gavin, I once yeah. appeared on one of them. Did you really? You were laying a pond, were you? No, I was like, they'd ring you up and say, want some lights for this garden, you know, and it's like, there's Dermot there with his shovel and outside yeah. there's like 40 wheelbarrows there. As soon as the cameras were switched off, there's people everywhere flooding in. Oh, so he yeah. did nothing bar. <laughs> so yeah. Dermot didn't do anything. Put, oh, put yeah. the last plant in, but it was like, yeah, that garden, whoever got the house was awful. It's the massive shark's fin in the back garden. <laughs> don't, don't. What's the shark? Oh, the shark. Uh, what, what it was, was a big shark's steel fin? shark's fin in the back oh, garden of this house. They craned it over the top. Can you oh, imagine okay. buying that house? It's like, what are you going to do with this? You did like <laughs> to be creative, didn't you, old yeah. Dermot Gavin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the program was. It's a garden. Home program. front in the garden. Oh, yeah, we'll get the wrong repeat. Yeah, we'll be on there. It was a no, classic. If I wasn't doing this live stream, we're watching the full football matches that are on tonight. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, get some yeah. scores. No, in no, no, no. We're on it. Okay, so yeah, yeah. so that's good. We've got several more photos left, right? So let's come down and have a look at these before we. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we doing on mics? Is there any more mic issues? No, we're okay. Okay, so uh, we've got this one here. What's well, your issue with this one? Um, well, I mean, Gordon got, gave me this picture and said, uh, look, look, Ray, this is wrong. And I said, I pointed out to Gordon, I said, it's technically correct. You, you know, exit signs are not just above uh, doors. They can also be about above uh, windows if that window is an escape, uh, a, a part of an escape route out to safety and to a muster point outside the building. So you'd say if you went through that lead window <laughs> <laughs> with a lead tape, I, I, it, looks like I'd, it looks like I'd still be in the building. Yep, okay. <laughs> not got out, maybe, well, I? <laughs> well, I'm sure they've done this, an assessment that way, may well be the way out. It looks like the way into a restaurant or something. Um, but yeah. Do you think the arrow might have wanted to point either left or right? Is that what No, no, the, the, the arrow is wrong. The arrow should be pointing upwards and, and it's kind of a quirk of the regs that um, so forward a, and onwards is pointing up. upwards, yeah. yeah. So often, you know, a, an altruist will put an arrow pointing down above a door, and, you know, intuitively that's correct, 
but under the rags it should be pointing upwards okay. um, uh, to show that you go forward and through it. Yeah, you only use the arrow pointing down to show there's a change of level to a lower, lower level. Okay. So uh, it, yeah, it's, it's an imperfect thing. And what colour should um, the LED be in them? Uh, <laughs> for charging, that's always a question, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, green or red, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which one is it? Though? Yes, it's green for charging, isn't it? Yeah. I don't mind asking you. Yeah. Gordon, what's that? Charging LED in a magazine thing? I think it's. I think it's now Flashy, green. Oh, okay. It used to be red. Red. Yeah. yeah. But then we went green. Yeah. But then there's all sorts in between. There's all the flat, the self-testing ones and stuff like that. The one problem I've got: they make those lights too bright. Well, the emergency ones. ones. The, the the charge light. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, agree. Hotel, I agree, I tell you, I've yeah. been in some hotels, you like, you switch the lights off and it's like, oh, where I'm, I'm suddenly... Not a huge... Is, yeah. But is that specified in the regs, the amount of... Uh, of no, I think it's because LEDs just got brighter. As LEDs yes. got brighter, yeah, so they got yeah. better LEDs. Yeah, yes. they've left them. Yes. No, on certain hotels, I mean, some of them are super bright. You know, keep you awake at night. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a fire station here. You can see the. I can see them about. I'd say half a mile away. You can see the charge lights on the emergency yeah. ones yeah, above yeah, the door. Yeah, it's yeah. like that's good. All right. So next is controls. Mm -hmm. So we've done a little bit on lighting. And now you want to look at controls. That's obviously yeah. it's a light well, switch. This is well, th well, that's a form of control, isn't it? You know, please leave the lights on from eight o'clock till six o'clock. Um, now, look, you could have got a decent, you could, you could have got something quite cost effective to do that job at, at, at time or easily for there. And um, the point I'm making is that you know we should. Uh, uh, the problem is a lot of c controls become too sophisticated and people don't know how to use them and they're baffled by them. Yeah. Um, so it's a question of getting that right. I mean. You know, in a pub or a, or a, or a yeah, hotel, is there not, you know, is there anything wrong with a big grid of lights? Maybe not, and you, people don't label them. That's a big problem. I think electricians don't like labeling for some reason. Mm. Um, but you know, keeping it simple, a choice of four, maximum choice of four, you know, for any space, I think is is four, good. Four controls. Yeah, yeah, four scenes, four scenes. So you know, entertaining, sleeping, cooking, e eating, or whatever. A some room. Yeah, <laughs> it's called a living room. I don't you live in London. Is that a one bed? That's a one one bed house, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's what property's yeah. expensive down there. Yeah, so this know? is the you lounge, gotta, bedroom, <laughs> kitchen. You got to make it space. work. You got to make it work. Yeah, down there. Yeah. And, and that leads you into your last picture, yeah, which yeah, probably yeah. has those scenes setting on it. Is that a good no, thing? I like. I, I like that. I like that. It just gives you a, a, a short choice, um, and you know, a lot of manufacturers do this. Um, I know Rayco does this, Hamilton do this, and you can change, you can you can name what what you call these TV, you know, dining, um, prepping or whatever, you know. So uh, party we'll mode. Yeah, you can have party mode. As Friday well, night. Yeah. Is there yeah, a Friday night yeah. mode in your house? <laughs> is there Ray? Have you got Friday yeah, night mode? Yeah, we do. We do need to let our hair down, you know. Yeah. Get out to get a bit of bridge, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of bridge. Wow, no one saw that one coming, did they? <laughs> so, so let's let's dive, let's dive through some some tips and some do's and don'ts, hasn't yeah. it, on, on lighting rain? We thank you for that. I would say, and I know Gordon hasn't put it in. You will go back and we'll perhaps put it in the community tab. We did 30, 30 rules of lighting, didn't we, for Ray? Yeah, that's, it's a great one. To, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, the, the, it's worth sitting through. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a... Yeah. a, a, a you know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah. but sometimes It's improving. Do. You'll feel better for it. Yeah. But when yeah. you're learning stuff, yeah. and it, it's like people feel as, oh, I've got to watch this, but actually, you know, me and me and Joe, we, 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 we saw the pre-cut of that, and it's like, he rang me up and he went, it's brilliant, isn't it? And it's absolutely brilliant. You feel embarrassed as an electrician when you see good lighting. Yeah, yeah. You just need to see it, don't you? Yeah. Well, they're, they're not really rules. They're kind of thinking points you know just to think a little bit before you put that light in there can i do this better is there a better way is there an easier is there a way that will give a better solution? your odd number thing the amount yeah. of times now i see odd numbers of lights and now the brain works yeah. and, and you explain that yeah, brilliantly yeah, there yeah. you know the rule of three and people ask like about the rule of three and we call it ray malone's rule, rule of three, three. you've yeah, got your own rule now uh, <laughs> <laughs> i've got so, a rule oh, a couple wow. of last questions before we move on so you can put oh, this one okay. here oh another yes, winner was, you've uh, only got two more left yeah no, there's two, well there's two more and i've got two good questions here. so the first one's ian's craft beer and brewing so naturally we want to give him a prize because we'll uh, we're delighted to find out what craft beer and brewing is all we, about we, and uh, obviously the get involved tabs near the one where we got our address yeah. Feel free if you want to send us a few samples, yeah, yeah, or we'll yeah, pop out yeah. and check your lighting out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Microwave or PIR for occupancy sensing? So, Raymond. Oh, I think a microwave. I, 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 I'm more of a microwave man. But uh, good. <laughs> what, what, what do you say? Yeah, they're just they. You know, they're more powerful. They're better. Depends where, yeah. doesn't it? So it's, it's, depends yeah. where. Yeah. So the good thing about a microwave sensor, you can put it inside a fitting, and it sort of looks mm -hmm. through the plastic. So that's good on IP rated ones where you want to have a keep a high IP rating 
where PIRs don't tend to come in that. And we saw that in the golf field. fitting that we fitted yeah. recently. However, the problem with microwave ones is they can actually see through walls. They can do. <laughs> so you have them in a toilet or something like yeah. that, they can cause yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, they can see through plasterboard, can't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. we had one in the unit before we pulled out the, uh, the yeah. former toilet we had in here. Yeah. We had to put the microwave sensor in, it was never off. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. Like, okay. Ah, <laughs> that, that, yes, <laughs> really? that makes sense now, doesn't it? Because, yeah, I can see through walls. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, you moaned at me and everything. I was waiting for hours by the door. It's yeah. like, it's still not going off. It's still not going yeah. off. Yeah, of course it's it like, goes, yeah. yeah. Three hours I waited by that thing, and it's still the other way. He's the he's sort of lad that stands at the fridge, and it like, yeah. <laughs> trying to save yeah, energy. Yeah. That light's still on in there. Look, it's still on. Yeah, yeah. Caroline. Yeah, and then, the and then one, Adam McCabe. We can have, so this isn't the question, but he's told us, and he has a good tip I didn't know. Yeah. Ansel apparently do an emergency pin spot that comes with a built-in dimmer for the charge indicator. You can actually turn it down. Oh, right, like on a... Oh, you can have a little, there's a little dial yeah. on it, yeah? Okay, yeah. okay. little oh. potentiometer-style twisting yeah. thing. Yeah. So that's that's good. nice. That's, yeah, well, that's well, well done to Ansel yeah. for thinking about that and, yeah. and uh, appreciating that that's... There are other lighting companies we work with yeah. as well as Ansel, so yeah. we'd like to thank them all. Yeah. yeah. But that's a good one. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. A, yeah. Well, well done for yeah. thinking about that. Yeah. It's, it's the bit of. The, I was in a hotel and that someone had obviously had a problem with the charge indicator. They'd gone to the toilet and scrunched up some toilet paper and put it wet and stuck it to the roof. Oh. There's another top tip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I didn't think of that one. That reminds you of the days at school, didn't you? We get the old wet paper and. You, Stick it oh, to the ceiling, didn't you? Was it? Yeah, just yeah. all that sort of silly stuff. Yeah, oh, wow. I was pre preparing myself yeah. for life as an adult when yeah. I had to do LED lights. <laughs> yeah. Okay, some great stuff there. Thank you for participating. I know that's made that a slightly longer segment because we still haven't done the GT time, which is yeah. next. So what I want you to do now is get back involved because you've got a prize to give away. Gordon, can you show me the prize? Oh yeah, this is this is a treat. Okay, okay, so I'll come over with a hand cam. So chocolate. GT time. Everyone. Explain first of all the GT time, Gordon. Uh, so soon we've got Stephen from uh, Stephen Lester from Weeha, who's going to take on the Electrician's Challenge, which uh, regular viewers all know about. It's a race to, to wire a socket to a consumer unit, and the, you've got to get your time in. What time will he complete the challenge in? In minutes and seconds, you get one chance. You can't trade your time up or down as it goes on, so it's your first time will take and the closest person to the time that he does it in. Bear in mind, he works for Weha Tool Company. Will it be fast, will it be slow? Are we hoodwinking you there? Uh, get that time in. Also and a tradesman. Closest person to it. He is a tradesman, yeah. He's a, yeah. He's a man of the trades. Man of the trades, yeah. Uh, you could win this fantastic. Oh, and let's have a look, look. Oh, this looks brilliant. Pipe cutter. It looks like another trade, though, to me. Let me get this It one. does. It's a bit of plumbing, but these days we're branching into heat pumps, and I don't know Gary was going to give this away. I thought we should have held on to this. You did this say that is, already, did you? Look at that mechanism there, you've got a locking mechanism for the uh, to get the pipe, the right size pipe. Lovely. Yeah, and then you've got a little bit of fine adjustment on it there as well. It, it does from a quarter inch to an inch and three eighths, which if I think it, for it, Germans is an innovation yeah, actually. Just, and they send you a free £20 note with it, is that right? Well, it's equivalent to £20, it's a small bit of copper pipe, but that's worth, worth its weight almost in gold. Uh, another feature on this, nice little deburring tool on the back as well. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Now if I'd known this, Gary, this wouldn't have been leaving. But well, it's been in the box forever. It has, but I didn't realise it was as good. You just sort of pass it by, a pipe cutter. But okay. And this one's definitely going because we can't even say you've got to send us anything in. This is going tonight. Yeah, so this is the person closing. The times are coming in already. Okay, so, so just remind me who's doing it so I, I can get a bit it's of It's Stephen Lester from Weeha. So he's using his own tools. He's a tradesman and he's taking on the electrician's challenge, which is great. Uh, and it's we're trying to get it in minutes and seconds. We're trying to get it person to it one guess only yeah. and again if we do make a mistake and we made a mistake the other way we pulled out the random wrong person it's tough that's <laughs> just the person we pull out that we thought was closest when we do it joe's up in the in the balcony if we make a mistake yeah just bear with us we're old okay is what we are for that one time's flooding in Gary. good go so, on. so hang on yeah i've got a, it's not so easy so i've got tons of assets here let's go into the race thank you very much for Lude and Palazzoli for supporting this race well because without them and their consumer unit we wouldn't be in this position would we so yeah, uh, we're yeah. still on the original consumer unit as well yeah unbelievably yeah, yeah. the oh. breakers have changed a bit so it is a bit like triggers yeah. broom yeah but, it's, uh, it's, well, it's, the, it's the original <laughs> apart from it's had 14 it's new heads and 12 new handles yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so here we go let's go for electrician's challenge it's time for another electrician's challenge now it's often said that a bad workman blames their tools but tonight's guest can have no excuse for bad tools it's my pleasure to introduce stephen lester from weha hi gordon you're all right, you okay 
Well, we've got you along to try on the challenge wall. Yes. Yeah, you didn't think you were coming along to do this, did you? No, not at no. all. And we no. have actually been doing a session on uh, talk. We've got lots of videos out there, and Stephen's been involved in the last part of the series, which I absolutely recommend you check out because we've had a great day today, and we've learned loads about connections and obviously the importance of talk, yeah. which, which you're delighted about. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, so, how's life at Weeha at the moment? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, yeah everything going really well. Have yeah. we got anything to look forward to this year? There's a few new products coming out, which will be launched probably in the second quarter of the year. Right. So, you going to give us any hints? Not at the moment, I'm afraid. That's not very good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, you've been with Weeha a long time, or been with Weeha for six years now. Right, six years. Yeah. And, uh, so, you're not an electrician by background? I'm not an electrician by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I'd suggest you'd probably agree with that as we're about to go and check out the times. But how, <laughs> how did you find the challenge? It was uh, challenging. Challenging, that's what we like to hear. Well, let's see how Stephen got on with the electrician's challenge. So will Steve be fast out the gate as he takes on the electrician's challenge? He's got all the gear. Has he got any idea, Gordon? Well, he has got his glasses on. So does that mean he's serious about this and really paying attention? No, we've had a couple of previous attempts where I would suggest the glasses were required. So he's put them on out of necessity, I would suggest. But sit back and relax for this one. Well, he is sitting down here. Yeah, this is a first, the seated Remo. It reminds me of the song with the following lines. Those who find themselves ridiculous no. sit down next to me. Would that be James Scary? Yeah, it would, and I think they were from Manchester, and I think Steve would find that probably quite offensive. Well, I think he is a big Liverpool fan, isn't he? He's a season ticket holder at Anfield, uh, so he's at every home game, uh, in for a fantastic season. Are we in for a fantastic run through this race, Well, Well, I don't know. I think uh, Liverpool are doing substantially better than uh, Stephen is here. Will he be near the top of the leaderboard? That's what we're thinking. Well, they're in the run for all four major trophies, so I would suggest you can't get much better than that. So if nothing else, I would like to think Steve's going to have a good end to the football season with just those few right. games left so to go. He's going in for quite an aggressive twist there, Gary, and a double over. Well, this has caused him no end of problems in our practice run, so fingers crossed we can get it up the conduit at least at well, the he's first looking, attempt. He's, he's going for the straighten. That's always right. another top tip, but will it pay off? Right, it, so he's gone in. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah, look oh, at that. Oh, no problem. Oh, 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 same no. problems we had before. Yep. Yeah. No, won't go through, Steve. Just, oh. Oh, he's forced it through. Okay, so let's see if he can take this corner like Stephen Gerrard does. So he's uh, straight around the bend. Yeah, around the Seco bend into right. the top. Into the consumer. He's nearly he's nearly putting his head in the consumer unit. In the top so, onion bag, I would suggest here, trying to get it in. Is he going to? Oh, is he come on, so there's a grimace on the face there. Yes, that was tricky. All right, we're in. So we've got these three connections to make. So right, out with the pliers. Oh, old, old school. Old school, yeah. That's it. Before these uh, multi combination pliers, a traditional plier. He's a traditional man. Yeah, and one at a time, which I was suggesting the race wasn't the way forward. So how is he going to strip the ends? Uh, uh, slowly. Uh, <laughs> see, oh no, it's got an automatic wire stripper, so we've gone to the other end of the uh, technology scale. I should have told him, actually, there is a cutter in there as well. He could have just uh, chopped the wires. I'd like so. to think he'd probably know it was in the cutter as it was made by the same company that he's worked for yeah. for the last six years. Now, I did deliberately leave the speedy in the background there. He could have just, uh, could have just hopped in and uh, saved a bit of time with that. Uh, I doubt it, because it is a race, and if you want to go fast, the speedy's uh, everything oh, but fast. It can make a big difference on those terminal screws. Well, perhaps we'll see when you attempt the race, well, whether you'll be using the speedy in order to make your connections a given. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's still always diligently doing it there. I've got a bit of a loop there in terms of the wire. We're not bothered about that, it's just got to be connected. Okay, yeah. so that's the three connections in the consumer unit done. So we'll, we're dropping to the socket. Yeah, nearly there. Will he, will he go back onto the... Oh, what? You sort of, that's a sort of... Oh, he's in between it, there, he doesn't know what to do. That's a sort of uh, a squat. Okay. So, it, so, it, it, his buttocks nearly returned themselves yeah. onto the little neck. That's saying he's going to be fast, so he's, he's not decided to sit down. He's, he's, so he's, he's standing up. Yeah. So yeah. could this be? Uh, he's, yeah, he's not going to. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's going to be. Oh no, he's gone for the seated position again. He's settled in. He's settling. We're in this for a while, folks. Just uh, yeah, enjoy your drink while uh, Stephen just gets on with this there. So. He's, he's a snazzy dresser though. I think there are a set of Doc Martens on the end of his feet there. And I think from memory, I think that's down by what's left of the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Oh, that's the a Doc fake Martin Cavern Club. That yeah, year. It was rebuilt. It wasn't the original. Yeah, I know. And it, I don't think it's quite on exactly the same location, is it? But uh, it gets the Americans in there, if nothing else. So yeah. that's where the DM shop is. So we've got that and some turnips as well. Yeah, um, Steve wasn't the tallest contestant we've ever had. And I would suggest that was probably short-legged jeans. And I would suggest they were still a little bit long. So the turnip was an assessment 
necessity. Yeah, well, so perhaps uh, yeah, send them for alteration next time. So meanwhile, we will wax lyrical on the dress sense. He's, uh, he's into the terminals here. Are we, get, are we getting there? We're still seated. Well, he's dressing the cables in. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's not, he's not going to be standing. So, uh, yeah, the CPC's to go in, and we'll see what that time is. Yeah, yeah. look at that little yeah. tab. Bill suggests that's a fashion statement. I would suggest they were too long for him in the first place. Concentration's still fully there. Yeah, full, full array of Weeha tools in the background. Oh, cover screws going on here. This is always a one. Top tip again though, we only used a couple of tools, didn't we? Three tools there in order to do it. You could have got away with one. We didn't really need the pliers if we'd have used the uh, automatic strippers correctly. Yeah. I think sometimes it's, a, it's a, a balancing relationship between using several different screwdrivers and just trying to get away with one. Yeah, a bit of a shake there. Oh, slipped, slipped at the final furlong. He's done. You're right, it was challenging. Yeah? Yes. And uh, you, you hoodwinked us because Gary tells me you actually used to be a bricklayer. That's correct, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah, so for the, many years. How was the bricklayer electrician relationship on site? Uh, I think a screwdriver and a trowel are completely different. Yeah, I think we can agree. We've just seen that. So if we look at the, uh, if we look at the time, looking across at the leaderboard, where, where, do you, where would you like to be? Well, Mark's a lovely guy. I'd yeah. like to be above Aaron. Yeah. I'd like to be round about Dave Barnes. All uh, right. Maybe, maybe below him, above him. Okay, Let's well, see. Dave Barnes is the target. No surprise, because he actually works for Nipex. So, Stephen Lester, you did this in. Oh, I'm going to have to sit down at this point. Oh, six minutes and 23. Okay. Which puts you above David Barnes and certainly above Aaron. Brilliant. Oh, that was, uh, it was a really good laugh. Yeah, we, Gary hoodwinked you there. Yes, he was a tradesperson, but it yeah. was bricks. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I imagine he weren't very quick at laying them either. <laughs> okay. Brilliant, a massive Liverpool fan. Uh, season ticket holder, we had some great times. So and we're going to go and see him soon. So this is a, a couple of chances to bump into us if that's something you want to do. And I think the whole team EFIX across the two events, you probably bump into us all. We're going to be at the Elect Show in Harrogate, aren't we? Yes, next Thursday. And some people have asked that because uh, Leah Winsbury wants to pick up a prize there. So oh, we, right, okay. we could do that. We might, we might get it out before that. Depends if you pull in the uh, mm -hmm. Get Involved tab below yep. for your address. But we'll be there just on the Thursday on the Weha stand. Brilliant. So you can come and obviously... I take back your comments you said about uh, Steve being slow. <laughs> People did actually say he was slow because he kept the tools on display longer in the background. So he was actually <laughs> selling by doing it's it. It's method so in his was, madness. Uh, it's it, method yeah. in his madness. So, yeah. so, so, so we'll so. be there in Harrogate, which is only up the road from us, isn't it? Is, it is, yes. It's 175 <laughs> miles up the road to be up the road from me, <laughs> yes. though. So, yeah, yeah. just yeah. to get there. So, um, but then we're there we're only on the Thursday on the Weehar stand. Yes, we will so, be. We'll yeah. be floating around there. So, come along and say hello. And then on the Friday, we'll same be... Same week? And same week, yes. Yeah, so we've got to travel all the way down the road and beyond um, to... Uh, we'll be at uh, Fully Charged, which is at Farnborough Airshow. And you'll be there as well, Trevor, won't you? Yeah, absolutely. Be there on the Friday and the Saturday at Fully Charged. Yeah. Okay, so you can come along and see us at Fully Charged as well as Trevor. But if I'm coming along to see you, Trevor, I need to know a little bit more about your EV blocks. So if I bring in the first photograph, let's have a look at what you do for a living. You are an electrician, is that right, Trev? That's right, yeah. From school? Uh, yeah, straight, 16, straight into a Did you do a proper apprenticeship? Or did you proper apprenticeship. Three, three day course? No, four years with uh, Alfred McAlpines. Okay, and brilliant. Then qualified at 20. And then you went and worked for yourself and all the rest of it, you had your own electrical contracting firm? Well, yeah, so I went travelling for a bit and then came home. The travelling stories are great. If you bump into, <laughs> bump into Trev at for fully charged, have a few travelling <laughs> stories, they're good. Yeah, yeah big so, team. Yeah, for, what, four or five years on the road travelling and then came back, got a proper job and then when I was about 30, set up on my own and done the whole electrical contracting journey from Manning Van to several vans on the road and, and all the rest of it. And it led you to where you are now because you were doing a lot of early EVs for places like car showrooms where having several Audis and places like that. And you, you had to get, you had a problem, so you solved your own problem and then that's where you are now, yes? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we, we were fitting EV chargers and, you know, three, five years ago now. Um, and we wanted to fit them fast. The first job we went to we was like pouring concrete and putting wet mix in like three days for the stuff to go off and, and that like, led you to this little thing on the screen now so that comes pre-cast yep so i order one of those and only excavate the ground which i'd have to do if i was going to do a, a standard pour yep i drop that into place and there's there's four entry exit points to it there's a, a plate that removes off the top and that is you know 
makes electricians life easy, do you agree? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, and that's what we were looking for. So you're not gonna get caught out by fixing arrangements, changing from what it says in the book to what actually turns up on site. And also, um, like Gary says, you can use them for a change of direction, for cable pulling. They'll take up to 150 mil size duct so you can get a good few cables to your EV charging points. And uh, you can see on the slides there, just how easy it is. You nice firm base underneath the block to support it and then backfill around it. And, and, and having those four points, it means it's future proofed as well, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, so you use it as a pulling in point if you're going further up the run, but you know, as you extend that circuit on, you've got that natural route already with the ducting in place. So I think it's excellent. And we've used them here at Lineside Studios, and I'm sure Gordon's left that link for that in the description below. We'll be adding it at some point. So there we are, we're looking at a, almost a finished one now. That plate's been added now. And let's say that I've drilled that plate out for that tower, okay, or that post. And then in the future, I decide to have a different style of post. How easy is it for me to replace that plate? So, yeah, so that's a charge point charger on top of there. <coughs> Basically, unbolt the four bolts in uh, each corner of the DAPS plate, take it off, and must, you know, order a new DAPS plate from us, drill it, fit your new charger, and away you go. So, so, so again, once the concrete's in, it, we've got that versatility of changing the system over. Hopefully what would happen is the new post would cover the holes from the, from the electrician's point of view, and they'll be well away, but things change and all the rest of it. And we can see one here, um, obviously installed, and that's a back-to-back -back post, and we've talked about back-to-back -back posts uh, as well. So yeah, that's good. It's, it's a nice solution to the problem. But what people aren't seeing there as they look along that line is obviously everything that's gone under the ground, all that ducting's in place, isn't it? So as we, we change, upgrade, or make a, an alteration to that system, actually it's all the infrastructure's in there to make those e e easy alterations. Yeah, and all those like pedestals, they're all the same all the way down the run, all the way across the site. Or if they've got like a multiple site, so car showrooms are a perfect, perfect example. They want all their car showrooms to look the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we're going and for. And there we have it again. You know, that's a, that's a nice touch, isn't it? You know yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. And again, making electricians life easier, you know, the barrier to doing stuff is always the things you don't do, isn't it? You know, I'd like to fit an EV charging point, but I've got all these civil works to do. Actually, it's removed a great lump of that, hasn't it? You still got to dig a hole. We understand that, but yeah. obviously the rest of it's done for you. And we used them here, didn't we? Yeah, the great. Yeah. yeah. Second version was easier than the first one. I can well imagine. Yeah. yeah. First one was like a tank stop. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. But uh, they're <laughs> down in weight for those people doing the job. Yeah. We had the original ones in, and yeah, yeah that's a little bit of grunting. Though, so. it was still no, they're good for bigger though. charge points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Bigger charge points, but it was, yeah, it was, uh, well, we enjoyed it. We used it as a seat and all sorts. It was there for, <laughs> yeah. for, for months. For all times. But, but we've got one at the front, haven't we, which we will put, so we've got two in our uh, car park, but we use the first one as a pulling in point between both buildings yeah. to bring our internet connection across, and obviously we've got some infrastructure under there, and we pulled to the back. But it means that in the future, we can easily add one for videos at the front, don't we? Yeah, I just mm -hmm. just take the top off, put one on there. Yeah, I think they're good for lighting as well, actually. For bollards, a lot of people, you know, people yeah. put bollards down yeah. driveways and stuff like that yeah. down Gary's drive. He's uh, he puts these bollards down there. It's, yeah, that's a. You, you need a smaller one, Trevor. That's a well, next we are yeah, working yeah, on a smaller yeah. one at the yeah. moment, um, and we've had a contractor actually put um, take around fifty blocks for a project and put in bollards next to a load of chalets. Yeah. Um, chalets? Yeah, like um, glamping, that's what they call it. Oh, right, yeah. what we used to call caravans back, yes. in, the, <laughs> yes. back in the day. And now chalets yes. or Static glamping homes. pods, yeah. 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 shepherd's yeah. huts. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, great application. But again, it's anywhere, it, yeah, pouring concrete. You see, and you, but I still see, I watch on Instagram, obviously we follow a lot of uh, EV charge pot installers. We have we lots of entries in our awards for it. So we, we've got to take an unhealthy interest in a lot of EV charge, but still see lots of people putting the shuttering in. Yeah, it, I mean, it's their own. Effort. It's, Tom and effort. It, it's, it's like, it comes on a pallet, you put it off the pallet, in the hole. That's it, it's yeah. so good to go. Now, one, yeah, cast it, put a block in, your choice. Five, six, 10 of them. Do I really want to build 10 lots of shuttering? And, Cut or carry the gear around. But when George is in, I'm not waiting for anything to dry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're off, we ain't got that, my dad would call it green. When you go to drill into it, it's a bit soft still. My dad would yeah. say, oh, that block's a bit green yeah. and concrete's a bit <laughs> yeah, green. Yeah, yeah, is that a term? Yeah, is that yeah. right? What they call it in the day? I'm sure that's what he used to say. Yeah. So again, that's great. So if I go down to fully charge, you'll obviously be on one of the stands down there. Which stand are you on? 
Uh, four. four. Sorry. Yeah. So many four. stands? Four, four. Trevors. Four Trevors. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to be spreading myself around uh, four different stands. So which stand are you on? So uh, we'll be with Garrow. Uh, they're going to have a B500 Plus on their stand. Uh, with Replenish, they're going to have a cross section of one of our EV blocks. Yeah. So you can see, see Jim. Top. Jim. Have you seen yeah, Jim? 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 Lovely Rock. blog. Um, nice blog, Jim. Nice blog. We, yeah. we can't wait to meet Jim. Yeah. Nice blog, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Go do a replenish stand if you're down there and just say, Jim, I've heard you're a nice blog. Yeah. That's yeah, so it. Jim and I think Damien are going to be down there as well from Replenish. Jim's a nice bloke though. Uh, and then we'll be on the stand with EV Tower and Energize uh, Energy. Oh, yeah. Pretty popular then. Yeah. Seems to be. Um, the blocks are selling pretty fast. So that's good. Dead chuffed. And again, you know, electricians come up with ideas. We used to have Innovation Corner, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yeah, products made by electricians for electricians was a big thing. You know, we've got our Richard Brooks and the people like that, and we, we've had the, mm. the Cable Mate, the Brockett, um, all sorts of things uh, that we've had in the past. Was Cable Mate one? Have I got that right? Yes, yeah. my, my, my mate, Cable Mate, wasn't it? The old Spuler. Yeah. And, all it. Yeah. and we love it. And, and Trev's in that, in that bracket as well. So it's great, and it's to celebrate people, you know, that take an idea and uh, follow it all the way through. So four stands you'll be on. Where will we be in particular? Will we be floating about or will you be able to see us down there at uh, Fully Charged, maybe hovering around one stand more than the uh, rest? So we, we've run uh, My Energy for a bit. <coughs> we'll be there. So that's, Tell uh, that again, I'll cough. My it. Energy. Sorry, yeah, mate. I thought you were lucky. Yeah. No, I'm dry as... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just because you're... Because but you we, carry on. Yeah. You're on for gonna, hours. Yeah, it's an epic. We've got the plug and socket, yeah? <laughs> carry on. Um, yeah, so we'll be on uh, My Energy, but yeah, we'll be wandering around. We'll, we'll try and do a wander around the show and see what's uh, interesting. We'll try and find Trevor. Yeah, I'll be, around, I'll be around on the Friday and the Saturday. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll just be there on the Friday. All right, but it's, uh, yeah, but so pop down and see us if you're down at, yeah, Fully Charged Live. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's only £45 a ticket to get in. <laughs> which might, Sorry, might the cost back. Oh, How much? <laughs> I think that's the rumours. We got press pass, though. So Did you get press pass? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice to, yeah, so. so I'm coughing 45 quid up and you're getting in for free, eh? Is well, that how it works? It's it and you get to get a, yeah, you can go around and uh, get to see all the good stuff. Um, so we'll be there and we'll be at the Lex uh, on the Thursday. And prior to that, on the Wednesday, I'll be at Rexel, well, with Rexel at Hilton Hotel in Reading. They're doing a big trade event. Uh, with a lot of lighting manufacturers and EV manufacturers on the day. Okay, yeah. that's a They're making a big yeah. Yeah. day out for your yeah. Yeah. day out with the lighting see, manufacturers yeah, to yeah. the good, Hilton in Reading. Good excuse to get to Reading. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, I think people have been waiting on because I think they want to win a prize. I think we've started. <laughs> it did, we forgot yes. to mention who'd won it. <laughs> it, it was, <laughs> well, <laughs> we said we'd leave it right to the end. We're probably have we got anyone still on with us? Wait, we these prizes. We have. We've still got hundred people. Thank on. you very much. Okay, I'd love to know the football scores. We're going to get those. We're going to go into the plug and socket for a few minutes uh, at some point. That's when we relax out, which is at the back. I'll get it. I'll it's get fine. It. Trev, big tease on, on it. Yeah. Big tease on it. So, um, yeah. So the person who got closest time in five minutes twenty-one, and obviously the time was five minutes twenty-six. Was no, it wasn't. No, you've said all of that wrong. Yeah. Six minutes, six minutes twenty-three. You had the first, do you? Six minutes. Oh, six in. Six minutes twenty-one. Was, three. Yeah, he got twenty-one. He got twenty-one. Yeah. The actual time, six minutes twenty-three, was that tool guy, which oh, is wow. as we know is torchy. So he's a double winner. Tonight. Double winner tonight. So, wow. so he's going to need to fill the tab in at least once, isn't he, for yeah. us? Yes, yeah. yes, he is. Just fill fill it in, and the get involved tab. The last thing you scroll below, and you'll find down there. There's a contact us form at the bottom, and you just say, "I've won a prize." Yeah. And then, okay. uh, yeah, just, just and we expect a little bit of monochrome of decency for people going in there, aren't we? Yeah, okay. So, um, but yeah, but he also, but he already said he already uses one of these. Oh wow, is that it? So, so he doesn't need it. So he doesn't need it. Yeah, he does need it. So please take it. <laughs> so, yeah. I said sell the copper bar in there that's worth about 130 quid or whatever it is. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Okay, so now we're looking for Gary Swap Shops. I think you've got two winners for me on that. Uh, Gary Swap Shop. Yes, I have. We have got. Oh, no. Whoa, <laughs> controversial. I like controversial. It. <laughs> so we didn't pick these out. So the first one is Erasmus Rainier, who was on at the start. So it looks like a new name for us. So you've won one of those. So he's got to send us what, Gary? He's got to send us what? He's got Ray. Uh, uh, he's got to send us a ceiling rose. Uh, there's the inside of it. Does he? No, sorry. Yeah, that a ceiling rose. He's got to send us a ceiling rose. Yeah, yeah. Ceiling rose. <laughs> Just a ceiling rose, okay? Or bits of ceiling. I don't mind yeah. how you get it in the envelope. Yeah, do whatever yeah, yeah. you got to do. But if you do send us it, okay, you got to send it to Line Side Studios. How do we find the address out? It's just just got the Get Involved tab. A lot. It's all in there. And our address is in there. Yeah, even I looked there. in there today to prove that. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. And then, um, and then the second person has won. It's won before, but he didn't stand to the end last time. It's Tom Bickerton again. So, and yeah. 
Yeah, so Tom's won as well. We, we yeah. follow him on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah. So the two people that have won, the only way you've won is you send us to Lineside Studios. The address is in the Get Involved tab. You must send your address with it as well and a nice letter saying, now I'm your favourite person in the EFIX team. And if you do that, I guarantee, hopefully within 28 days, to get out you effectively the EV Blocked bundle that we saw at the start of the show. And if you haven't seen it and you want to know what it looks like and you've missed it, it's also on our Instagram story. So feel free to go over and follow us on Instagram. Mm. So that's us done all of that. So that means, Gordon. We're in the plug and sock. Yeah, so put the sign up then so oh. we can just, just have the sign round. Where's he hidden it? Where's he hidden it? Oh, it's there. Just give us it. I'll put it in the front. Same, the front. Well, yeah. it would have been seamless, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. We'll edit it out. It's only live. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're, in, so we're in the plug and socket now. We've done a longer live stream already than we thought we were going to do because obviously we had Ray's brilliant insight into lighting. But for everyone else, we've effectively finished now our live show, but we still need to thank the people that make it possible for us to come fortnightly to you and do these live streams. And we're going to thank the following people. We're going to thank Doncaster Cables. We're going to thank the good people at Lesico. You might know them as BG. We'd also like to thank the people at Luden Palazzoli. I would also like to thank the people at Wago, but there's always one I can never remember, Gordon. Doncaster Cables. I've already done it. Oh, Luden. I've already done it. Lasico. I've already done it. Marshall Tufflex. Well done. We'd yeah. like to thank the lovely people at Marshall Tufflex as well. Yeah, yeah, got, yeah, got double mentions there. there. They're also on the screen if we hadn't missed anyone out. We thank those people because without their great support, we wouldn't be able to do this every two weeks to obviously bring you this show as well. So effectively, if you stayed for the main show and the prizes, you're done. We're going to be on the questions now and we're just going to chill out. Mm. Chill out. So good, good questions. <coughs> so someone's asked, what's the procedure for registering that's producing an electrical idea? So if you're an electrician who's got an idea for a product. Yeah. Um, so the best person to get involved with is contact Richard Brook. Yeah. He'll help you out. So if he, Richard Brook being the inventor of the sockets and stuff and splates and always comes with great ideas. I think he's, he's never had a patent turned down. Is that right? Yeah, but that's a, that brings up a thing though. The problem is if you've got a super good idea yeah. and it's worth a patent, don't tell anybody. <laughs> you've right. got to get the patent. If you go along and say, hey, Gary, I've had this good idea and I've disclosed it to you, technically you, you've lost the right to get a patent. Ah. So you've got to be a little bit careful Ooh. on that. So. so legal advice first. Yeah, yeah so some people make the mistake. You've got a great idea. You walk through the door of a manufacturer and say, yeah, I've got this great idea. They've now got a great idea. They've now got a great idea. Because you sign a non-disclosure agreement, did the, you know, you've just given that idea away. Oh, thank you very much. We'll go and make that. Okay. And then if then you went on to patent it, they could say, actually, I've seen that before. You know, they came in and showed us. We are wise, wide open. So, so, so again, so I still think it's worth reaching out to Richard Brook and not telling him your idea. Yeah. But obviously, <laughs> then asking him how to go about the process. Richard is an amazing bloke and will always help you. Um, again, LinkedIn. Uh, as well, uh, for contacting him, it'd be more than that. But he's also obviously on Instagram. Um, he's down as sockets. He's on here at the minute. Yeah, is he on there? Is he? Oh, on. I've just done him a load of extra work. <laughs> <coughs> ring Richard. Yeah, ring Richard. We'll Any leave his phone number. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So, okay, good piece of advice there. So keep your idea to yourself, but obously seek maybe a little bit of yeah. legal advice. But you've gone through patents, haven't you? Trevor's done it, yeah, oh, I was thinking. Oh, my days. Yeah. 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 Cheap process? No. No? No, not in the slightest. So not only have you got your lawyer's fees, which you go, oh yeah, that's quite a lot of money, but I'll go with it. Then you've got your filing fees and your patent return. So the patent office will then send you a letter back saying, we need a response from you. Your lawyer then charges you for that. So every single step of the way, there's a bill attached to it. And all the time you're going through the patent pending process, there's bills annually for that as well. So all of a sudden you're like, Oh, this is stacking up. So if you're going to go to an attorney to get a price, like we would get a price for materials, ask them to give you a full breakdown, including the patent office charges as well, because sometimes that's hidden behind. Mm. And, so, and can't, can't you get someone to mediate for you to see if they believe sort of that you would get a patent? You have a patent search done. Okay. To charge Ooh, you money for that. They okay. charge you money for that. Yeah. And it's per country so then you've got Europe you know, UK Europe then you go over to that's like a little bit of bitterness in your voice Americas <laughs> and Canada I'm just kind of going through it and I'm like this is big stuff it's really yeah. expensive I mean I think I mean and it's a long time since I went through it probably 10 years but I think back then it was I think it's about 20,000 to get to the first sorry patent yeah. 20,000 pounds that's the beginning of it I think, I think isn't it? Yeah. yeah and then you start rolling that out per country yeah mm -hmm. so Again, I don't need to know the number. Trev, you put yourself through that process. Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah, so we are patent pending in UK, wow. Europe, America, and Canada. Don't have an idea, have an amazing idea if you're going to go <laughs> yes. through this. Yes. Yeah. 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 So you have to make sure you're going to sell some. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's worth yeah. protecting. So, yeah. so, mm-hmm. so, so just making it, so you've mentioned those countries. Are we talking 80,000 quid? Are we to get it across the, across the globe? I would say it's going to get close to that by the time all the legal fees are done, patents are granted. Because then once you get your patent granted, it's then another charge to yeah, go for it fees as well. into that maintenance country. fees. Is that like a, is that like a website <laughs> maintenance fee? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yes, you've got patent maintenance much. fees. Yeah, yeah. Every, every year wow. you've got to keep them topped up. Depend on the market. Really? Some markets are more, yeah. And then, then if someone infringes your patent, then yeah. So you've got to be, yeah. it's one of them things. That's where either, yeah. Wow. Well, I've learned something on a live stream tonight. Well, there you go. Wow. I've learned that Big D's got big pockets, hasn't he? <laughs> big <laughs> ones, hasn't he? he? used to yeah. have them. <laughs> when he, whenever we're near the yeah, bar yeah. and he's going, oh, I'm, just, I'm just starting out my business. I want yeah, to be going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spend all your money on your patents. Yeah. Isn't he? When they come through, yeah. I expect you to be at the front of the bar queue. Wow. That's a lot of money, isn't it? That's yeah. a lot of money. Mm. So. And I said, there are so there's a couple of bits in in the states um, called oh, PPA in America that gives you a year provisional patent application. Right. So that's not a full filing, but it gives you that first to file, which the Americans have adopted. So as long as you've registered with the U.S. Patent Office uh, with a PPA, you've got a year to kind of sell that idea to a big company, if you like, under an NDA and make sure it's watertight. Um, After that year period, it's kind of go or no go. So you have to either make an amendment to your PPA, i.e. file another one, or go to the full patent application. And the patent office will only look at it when you go for the full filing. Mm. Mm. Um, so I don't know whether the PPAs are available in the UK and Europe. Sounds like someone's making. But a they're a bit cheaper. Mm. They're, they're you know considerably yeah. cheaper. But okay. So uh, so first of all, I go back to it. Get some advice. Get some legal advice, and then think. Yeah, yeah. Think long to, and hard about yeah, the final. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. get advice off a lawyer because obviously their their advice mm. always yeah. ends up costing. You, well. They'll always think, make you think it's worth starting the process, and then obviously because it's like for them, it's like oh, it's a sale, and we're, we've got this person on the hook for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not money, isn't it? I'm so not it, thinking how much Richard Brooke must be worth. He's got several patents. Well, it, they're only worth it if they're selling on the back of it. Yeah, because yeah, people ask him what did that patent? I had, I've got seven patents actually. If I look back in, and do you uh, still? Oh, are they got a lifespan? A Twenty-five years yeah. patent. So did you do them when you first started out? Yeah, so thirty years out of date. No, some of them have still got a bit, a bit of life to, bit of life to, yeah, bit of life yeah. to run on. I like you. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so, what, so give us, give us your best pattern. Um, the what? petrol engine. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, optics for LEDs. Uh, right. So uh, LED optic that also in the same bit of plastic is also the base that supports it. So early days of LEDs, optics used to have a black plastic base. Yeah. And used to click a clear bit in the top. Yeah. So we developed an optic that the clear plastic and the, and the top plastic were the same item. Right. And do people still use that technology? Oh, yeah. And do I have to pay you for the privilege? No, because I'd sold the, the business that was part of. That patent went with, with that business. But Okay, that patent went with the business. But would people still be giving the, the original patent holder it's effectively a, a credit for that? Every if time they infringed it. If they infringed it. Right, yeah. okay. But then so much work. You have a big pile of patents and then you trade your pile with their pile. Oh, right, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's what mostly it is. So it's like we've got a nice pile and you've got a pile. We want to use your stuff and there's a swap between it. Okay. Yeah. So that's. That, and what else have you got then? Uh, so there's that one that was. Um, uh, in have you got mates that Early days of LED yeah, fittings. Yeah, uh, early days of fittings is a sandwich and two layers of glass between a clear. Uh, with a clear resin in between to form a waterproof seal. So right. you couldn't see a gasket around the fitting. So you'd hate it because it's sealed for life. You can't maintain it and yeah. stuff like that. But it was <laughs> a circular economy. Yeah. Yeah. A circular Ooh, economy. Very much not the circular yeah. economy. And then the other one was what, early days of RGB control. LEDs getting the jelly babies out. I'm yeah. trying to open them quietly while you're yeah. saying really good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, so patents, but yeah, you're right. But it's, 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 it's one of them things. If you build a business, people like to see patents. And then if you, yeah, and it's like, well, because it gives them confidence in the product. So, yeah. so it could be worth doing it. Yeah, we'll sit next time. We'll watch these numbers. You know. it's, you know, it's an interesting process, if not expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. But lawyers are always expensive, aren't they? So, mm-hmm. Have yeah. you ever got divorced? You never hear that thing. I'm, I'm from the legal team. How can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost you this much. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, right, okay. So, cool. You've had seven. Yeah. It's nothing yeah. you ain't done, is it? So has anyone so to answer that question? We've answered that one. When you were working one. with the first one, was it boring after a while? <laughs> 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 Have you discovered that? <laughs> very quickly I discovered that. More boring, I should say now. Yeah. Oh, wasn't that, Gordon, wasn't there a very famous it? patent in the lighting in business, which was about colour tuning and uh, RGB tuning, whether you use pulse width modulation oh, or yeah. not? Phillips um, clobbered people on that. And this patent cost, well, they bought it for hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. from an American company, yeah. and they proceeded to enforce that, that patent. And uh, so it shows you, you know, an important patent, which that one was, tested in the courts, mm. tested to destruction in the courts, um, is worth what? W well over a billion dollars, you know, yeah. so it's, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. And they especially, paid, yeah, in the they States. Paid, they paid $620 million for the company that owned that patent. To get the patent. To get the patent. To get the patent. And then yeah. they obviously put that with all air of the patents and then yeah. said to everyone, would you like to use our technology? And Well, you're right. actually already using our technology, so would you like to pay us 5% of your sales wow. to continue using mm. that? So that was, yeah. yeah. So okay. Okay. But anyway, that's... Because uh, if they find you in for infringement in America, it's multiples of earnings oh, lost. Yeah. So it's not just one-to-one, -one, it's... It's like five times earnings. But the Americans gone mad on it, yeah. 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 So good. then you'll get lawyers chasing you going, oh, we've got this lawsuit, oh, how do you fancy it? This company's been using that tech. Wow. And, yeah. oh, great ambulance, question, ambulance by the way. Yeah. Great <laughs> question. Yeah. Yeah. Even I want to shoot in for the last bit. Yeah. Yeah. Should do a patent special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but if you've got a good idea, it, it, you know, as I say, yeah, you're right. Speak to somebody who's been through the loop. Yeah. So speak to Richard. You know, I could. Yeah. I mean, but it's having that confidence that when you share your idea with someone, you have got some protection. Yeah. NDA. Uh, yeah. Watertight NDA. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's quite interesting. So we, I mean, last week we had Wago in here and they work with a lot of people who have ideas for to use their product yeah they do yeah and they're quite supportive of that if you go away go with an idea that they, they tend to be quite i believe quite honorable in terms of supporting mm. people doing it so this people spotted it earlier on as the camera was glancing around the old <laughs> uh, way go um ceiling rows which we've seen before and yeah so you know that's an invention with theirs but i think they're, they're quite supportive of Obviously, they want to sell more connectors, so people come up with clever widgets to use connectors. Mm -hmm. they, don't own, they don't own Wago Box, do they? Or Wago Box? No, no, no. That's, that was someone else's uh, idea and invention, but they helped them obviously yeah, get, get to, to market. They, they, but yeah, they didn't rebel against that, did they? Mm. And, mm. and <laughs> they pretty much used the same name, I think. Yeah. But they call it the Wago Box, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, but it's, it's spelt <laughs> remarkably <laughs> like Wago. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Does that say Wago to your Wago? Yeah, it does. But, it, but it's. I thought it was. I thought it was one company. Wow. Yeah, that's not theirs. Mm. Bring it in just yeah. for those people, because oh, yeah, it was nice. But they weren't niffed about it, were they? Does that say Wago to you? Yeah. Totally. It, but it's one that's... word, so it's a Wago box, is it? A Wago box. Is that the uh, idea? Okay. I would. I just assumed it was from the German manufacturer. Oh. Are you yeah. sure the Germans? Person you, skilled you in the art. You said French earlier on, didn't you? No, they're German. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said French earlier on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Yeah. Have we got anyone left? Have we still got people? Yeah, still it's got midnight, still isn't it? 80 people on. Oh, thank still you very much. much. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. You 80 people. I'm going to eat my jelly bags. I'm going to rush the paper on the way through. Yeah. Not hand them out, is he? No. No, no, no. Well out of reach as well. Patent pending, seven patents. It looks like I'm the one that needs the the pound jelly baby. So I've been left out in life. You live in the centre of London. I'm not spotting anywhere cheap there. It's not Chelsea, mate. Where do you live? Camberwell. Camberwell. <laughs> that sounds expensive. <laughs> it's urban, Gary. Urban, is it? Urban. It's Still can't drive your car. Vibrant, a diverse neighbourhood. Is that what we call it? So, um, yeah. So, those people. How do you stop an LED driver from flashing when failing? Ooh. Someone has to fit some in a school where people have epilepsy. So that's a good, that's a good yeah, question. Ooh. question. That's a good question. I'd take that question straight to someone like Osram. Something like that, Osram DS, because they tend to make very high quality drivers. And, uh, you need super high frequency drivers, basically. But it's the it. fail, isn't it? It's that yeah. classic one, the fail and the start flashing. So it's, yeah, you'd like, the, you'd like the item to almost understand it's failed and, and completely fail. Yeah. That's yeah. a semi fail, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. We need yeah. to change them immediately, I would say, if they're causing yeah. distress to anybody, yeah. any of the occupants. Yeah. yeah. But it's almost like. The, 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 
Yeah, the, yeah, it should come back to man. Manufacturers are creating a problem there. Their, their problem fails in a situation that can cause people so, that's issues, that's yeah, distress or issues. Yeah, yeah. They mm. shouldn't fail in that way, should they? They should fail safe, effectively. Mm -hmm. well, and safe in that case should be off. Mm. Not on, yeah. off, on, off. It Good question. The, it, could oh, well, the driver, it could be a combination of the drivers and controllers fighting each other. You can get flashing. Can come oh, out don't, of lots don't of get me started on failed don't lights get at him heights. Started. No, 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 so let's not get them started. Uh, uh, when I had my company on failed light drivers. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. One of the first jobs I ever yeah, went yeah. to. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, then. Edinburgh <laughs> International Conference Centre. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. were some lights, cold cathode lights up on the roof. And the company who made the ballast for them had put a thermal switch in it. Yeah, and okay. when they got hot, the thermal switch started tripping, and the lights start going off and on and off and on. You go to site, yeah, which one is it? it was, I think it was the fifth one along on the left there, right? <laughs> so obviously when you went to try and find out which one it was, the lights weren't on. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd wait there, right, fifth one. Right, it's that one, right. Get the scaffolding tower out, auditorium, seats in there, build the scaffolding tower up. Brace yourself, do boy. <laughs> Brace yourself. <laughs> Head up there. Right, it was think it's this one, change it, drop the tower, you know, down. Oh no, it wasn't that one, was it? Like the lights heat up, they start flashing. No, it was the seventh one along on the left, right? Scaffolding tower out again. Oh. I was like, no, nah, just so. <laughs> just, I yeah. said to that, don't put anything in that like causes flashing when it fails. It's just fail and go out. Yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 So that's a good question, but uh, it's. Um, yeah. And we haven't answered it. So, okay. Not really, no, but I think my yeah, still a great answer. question. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. go with ultra people who are known for long reliability because you can get the life. A good manufacturer will tell you the life of the LED driver buried in there at different temperatures if they're really good. We've so, seen that on Philips stuff before, haven't we? Yeah. Or Signify, whichever way. we've got to be careful, it's both. Yeah. yeah. Actually says, doesn't it? Yeah. You want the driver that comes with reams of data and like complex things you might not understand because that tends to mean they've actually done some work yes. to prove it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So mm. You only get what you pay for. I think the rule applies in life everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Uh, da, 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 da. Like the way cheap car lights do, the flashy ones. Uh, <laughs> yeah. about, mm -hmm. Where's your cheap car light gone to? <laughs> it's gone to Big Clive. So, sorry, <laughs> we're sending part of the uh, part of the Tesla is going to Big Clive. It is, yeah. So I'll, I'll try and get that off this week. It's an enormous box to send that. But uh, sorry, what's enormous Big Clive? Did you say? <laughs> the box to send the LED. I think so. The, I thought, uh, yeah. said, thought was, <laughs> he's in there. Um, yeah, what's the best way to mount spotlights in an insulated backed plasterboard ceiling? So we get this question quite a bit. So this is this, obviously in a lot of roofs, like an apex roof, isn't it? You've got plasterboard and then behind it immediately you've got like, yeah, big boogin, big amounts of, uh, of insulation. So, yeah, insulation mm -hmm. there. so we actually made a video of a product that we found at uh, Future Build, didn't we? We found that air cell. Uh, yes. Product which is like a sticky ice cream tub that goes into ceilings like that that creates an air gap to put your uh, spotlights in. So I'll try and, oh, again, I'll try and put a link to that product because that was quite we, good. That was buried in a video, though, wasn't it? And yeah, it was. It was our 10 great products from Future Build. It was but one the, of the which products. channel was that on? That was on the green. That was on eFix Energy. Yeah, so, it, so we've got eFix Energy as well. That's a, for the people that obviously are here on the red. Thank you very much. But we have got a green channel as well, which gives us a little bit more carte blanche to look at other things, doesn't it, to do with that green sector. Mm. But that was one of them. We see it all the time, like when people are airtight houses and you've got the vapour barrier and people got to cut into, into walls to bring things through. They'd sort of invented what looked like a good idea. Well, it was a good idea, mm. compared to what we've seen as other yeah. solutions. But personally, I wouldn't put spotlights on <laughs> sloping, <laughs> sloping no. ceilings. No, no, it doesn't yeah. look great. Yeah. So, so, yeah, start perhaps. Yeah, trying to yeah. convince the customer because I'm sure it's not the electrician. Yeah, start convincing the or customer. Or use um, use a surface spotlight. Ah, oh, yeah, those what those yeah. dish light ones. Is that what you yeah, get like look like a cone that fixes onto the ceiling. That, you know, yeah. Oh, okay. Or adjustable ones. Yeah, yeah adjustable. adjustable ans like uh, not Ansel. Uh, Astro Lighting do a great one for. Yeah, I've used loads of them. A great, great little product. Mm -hmm. so. so solutions are out there. There's solutions out there, but yeah, but not necessarily cut a hole in the ceiling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, would be a good lighting solution to light the Mersey Tunnel Hall of a tunnel lighting project. We, we once did a conference on tunnel lighting. You know, did you know, indeed. I'm, I'm, yeah. Let's go back to that. For those people who are standing there, something else he's done. Yeah. <laughs> I've got seven packs. I've done a... So we've mentioned tunnels and I've done a conference. Now, if you've ever been to a conference, you probably haven't been to one on tunnels, but no 
He organised and ran one. Who yeah. did he organise and run that with? With me. Oh, <laughs> pair of them, yeah. <laughs> Tunnels. Tunnel lighting. Specifically what, tunnel lighting. And, and I'm, I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, that's a jelly baby getting stuck yeah, that you're not yeah. having. The, um, and what's really good though is because you said to me that a tunnel's really quite complicated because you can't come out into that light and stuff. So the, the light has to work with you going in and out of the tunnel. Yeah. But when you drive out of it, you can't drive into a, like the sun, can you? That's what we call a transition zone, Gary. Transition so zone. You go into a tunnel, you drive into a really bright let down the motorway, you're pelting down there and suddenly you go into a dark tunnel. Your eyes have suddenly gone from bright to dark and obviously you can't see, can you? It's like, it's like suddenly switching the lights out in a dark room. Yeah, so you'll tend to find, as you go into a tunnel, there's loads of lights near the start of the tunnel as you go in. And there is, because I've looked. And they're really bright. There is, and I've looked. And then, and then as you get further into the tunnel, there's the lights, lights decrease. And that's yeah. it, that's yeah, your yeah. transition zone. So, mm -hmm. yeah. boring, isn't it, when yeah. he knows everything? Showing off, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Something else I've done, I've done a conference on tunnel lighting. <laughs> that you was really interesting. It. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was, the normal stuff was, you told me, I was like, yeah. and I went in, I, can't remember, I was coming back from... I've been to see Dan down in Portsmouth and Brocket Man yeah. and um, Adrian. Yeah. And I'll there there's some tunnels I went through there and, and, and I went, yeah, he's right. Yeah. It was exactly what you said. Yeah, transition zone. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, really, uh, yeah. Well, Gary, you're a man who takes your wife to see bridges on holiday. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went to the uh, Middlesbrough Transport Bridge because yeah. we're big fans of the same pet. Yeah. yeah. Took her there. We stood outside the pub where um, they cr crafted the deal. Brilliant. Then we went across. When you go across there, is it Hartley Pool across there? Yeah. They've got a nuclear power station. That's the yeah. next stop we had, <laughs> yeah. believe it or not. That's an exciting yeah. holiday, yeah. Uh, this is pre-kids. On your honeymoon, was no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Pre-kids this was. This is when we were living it up Did because you, we didn't have any responsibilities. Did pop down to ICI Wilton to see the <laughs> fertiliser down there as well? No. That, uh, pop into the red car steelworks for an afternoon yeah. at but, the blast but, furnace. Yeah. But if you ask Michelle, she would say we had a brilliant holiday. Yeah. Because we, we did lots of things we wanted to do. I went to... On the same tour, we went to Blackpool, went to the Winter Gardens, and we saw our first live darts. I met all the darts players and all that. It was good. Yeah. It was. It was one of. Them, I ticked off loads of stupid things that I wanted to do. Yeah. I didn't ever do a tunnel conference. <laughs> <though. That's laughs> <unlikely. laughs> I well, put it on your list in your bucket oh, list. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we don't have bucket list. I hate bucket. <laughs> list. Apologise yeah. to anyone who loves a bucket list. I hate bucket list. Either do yeah. it or don't do it. But don't put it on some <clears throat> some fictitious list that you're going to try and do. Yeah. Yeah. Get to that tunnel conference now. Yeah, I've just got, yeah. <laughs> right. Either want to do it or not. Yeah. And if I want to do it, I'm going yeah. to do it. Don't oh, around. Someone's at the yeah. Queen's Ferry Crossing in Edinburgh has crap lighting at both ends right at a high level, blinding in the night when there's nothing in the middle. So it's those, I know what fittings they are as well, actually. It's really sad. Those Thorn Orcus fittings, there's a low level. Oh, right, yeah. There's a low level light, street lights at this height rather than being up there. So. And they're giving you a lot of glare, is that what the problem is? I think is, that's yeah. what it looks, oh. sounds like here. Yeah, yeah. So. Middlesbrough Trans Did he meet Brian, the electrician, top bloke on the Middlesbrough Transport Bridge? The bloke on the Middlesbrough Transport Bridge thought we were great first time across. We went across <laughs> and, and we explained to him, so we went across and then just turned around and come back. And then when we were coming back, I twigged there was a power station the other side. And obviously I'm an electri electrical lecturer at the time. I thought it might be a golden opportunity to hoover up some free stuff. So we went back and we got back on it and went over it again. Went to, and of course it was shut. So we went in there and managed to get a DVD or a CD or so. And, come, and when we would come back over it for the fourth time, he had to stand as a couple of crayons. <laughs> He's like, yeah. what is this all about? Oh, yeah. Crayons. <laughs> this reminds me of this. Ray, did your clutch ones fail on a, on a ferry? It did. It did one failed in it. Well, I'll tell you what it was. It was one of those four. It, it was a, and they just brought in the push button. Um, handbrake. Uh, the handbrake. Yeah, well, it was not longer a handbrake. It's a push button. It, was, it had servo motors. Did, did did the job for you, and it was very new at the time. And um, what happened was, I got on the ferry to France, and when we got there, I was like, they they were leading all the cars out, and I came to come, and I couldn't move because the push the button and the, the handbrake wouldn't move so I was stuck on the ferry and eventually they had they said well you need to you need to get your car off and I, I said I can't get it off and then um, they started bringing in the other cars eventually the captain came down and he said um, well you're coming back to the UK <laughs> so we, we went back to the UK the same problem happened there we couldn't get it off we went back to France stopped in Jersey couldn't get it off there and then we went back we went to back to France on a Sunday, we get they sent a uh, a guy with a tractor was waiting for us to pull try and bump the car off, and um, he couldn't get it off either. And um, we went back to the UK, <laughs> and eventually it was it was uh, it was uh, taken off and put on a low loader, and we got the train we uh, uh, RAC. 
took us back up to London. But yeah, we spent a whole day going back and forth between uh, the UK and France. Love it. Yeah, a memorable holiday that was. Yeah. 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 And you were hammering me for having a lovely time at the darts and the transporter bridge. Still got a ferry. This wasn't out of my choice to spend, uh, spend you know, 36 hours on a ferry. <laughs> well, there you go. You, you thought you were funny going back and forth on the transporter bridge. So yeah, I could yeah, get off good. both ends, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, no, I think there's a lot of talk on bridges. So, yeah. I've got, have we got anyone left? We have still got 81 people on, but we're, uh, it is 10 o'clock. It is so 10 o'clock. I think we've done an epic record here, actually. <laughs> yeah. so. Genuinely, um, me, me and Gordon especially, and the team at eFix, we've still got Junior upstairs as well, so Joe's on, and, and Joe's been in the comments today. Thank you for staying on, and, and obviously into the plug and socket where we just relax out a bit. We really appreciate everyone who stays on. Yeah, the live streams have built up over time. We see a lot of similar names as well in the register at the start, which we absolutely love because people are tuning in regularly every two weeks. And we thank you for that support. If you are about, and we are in Harrogate, and we are down at the uh, Fully Charged show as well, please come up and have a chat with us. Um, We'd love to obviously hear your thoughts on different things to do with our electrical industry, but we genuinely, genuinely appreciate you staying on, especially into 10 o'clock at night, and there was four major football matches on as well today. So we'd like to end it in the following, wouldn't we? Yes, just remember there's no such thing as a calibrated arm. <laughs> nope, nope, nope.